At this point in the season, luck has nothing to do with where you're now standing. How about this question? What makes the elephant charge his tusk in the misty mist or the dusky dusk? What makes the muskrat guard his musk? Yeah, that's more like it. We're down to a question of courage. Courage. Which team has enough of it to claim the champion's crown? Just hang on, because we're about to find out. It's the Washington County Golden Hawks and the Calhoun Yellow Jackets next. Time to play some football. That's a championship team right there. It's a hot time. Friday afternoon at the Georgia Dome. It is championship game two of seven on championship weekend under the big top. One championship down, the next one on the board is in the AAA class. And it is Washington County and Calhoun. Two towns and two extremes. One coming from Northwest Georgia, one coming from East Central Georgia, meeting in the middle. Washington County at 14-0 and Calhoun at 14-0 right here on GPB to decide the AAA championship. I am John Nelson, my tag team partner for the weekend, Chuck Smith. And in this battle of one versus two, depending on your poll, Chuck, what's the mentality of a one versus two game? Well, it's the ultimate finality. You're both 14 and 0. You both have been the top two teams in the 3A classification. And, you know, there's going to be a winner and there's going to be a loser. And someone's going to be disappointed because think about it. These teams expected to be here. I mean, when you looked at the preseason, everybody expected these two teams to be at the Dome, and we got what we wanted, two of the best teams in the state. All right, let's talk about the folks from Northwest Georgia to start it off. The Calhoun Yellow Jackets making their sixth appearance in game 15 in the last seven years, and it's going to go to Kalen Riley when we're talking about the Yellow Jackets. It's going to be one of those situations with Riley as we get ready for the coin flip here. When it comes to Riley, a junior, who's done really well for himself. Last time Calhoun had a junior quarterback, it was Taylor Lamb, and they won a championship, a junior in Kalen Riley, which is under control. And that's why I call it the transformer offense, because this is a dual threat. He can run the ball, he can throw the ball, so he's, he's exactly what this offense needs. And remember, I call him a Teflon quarterback. He bounces back in quarterfinals, <laughs> four interceptions. He comes back in the semifinals and throws three touchdowns. He is absolutely a great player. Had an almost perfect game against Westminster in their 19-8 win in game 14. And then on the other side, you know, we talked about him. A lot of folks have talked about him. <laughs> and when it comes to Washington County, it starts with one guy in particular. It is A.J. Gray, and it is all day A.J. And when I think of A.J. Gray, I think of explosive. Six of the eight touchdowns he had versus Pierce County were for 47 yards or more. He can throw the ball. And if he gets an interception at free safety on defense, because he plays both ways, he's taking four back. He's electrifying the player of the year, Gatorade, here in the state of Georgia. He, I mean, he is one to watch, and he's a special, special talent in the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. He's committed, and what a great player to have. And that is the story from up here. We're going to send it downstairs to the third member of our broadcast team, Grace Olson, who has the early word and more on AJ. Grace. Thank you. That's right. With AJ, you said Gator Georgia's Gatorade Player of the Year, leading his team to a state finals game. Also, his team surpassed Buford for most points scored in the state of Georgia history. And for a player who's done all that, you think he'd feel some pressure on his back, but he actually has a very laid back demeanor. When we asked Coach Ingram uh, how he would describe him in a short sentence, he said, cool as a cucumber. And I talked to AJ earlier this week, and he told me that he actually doesn't watch game film. I said, do your coaches know that? Uh, supposedly they're supposed to watch game film outside of practice, but he said that it makes him feel like he'll underestimate his opponent so he doesn't watch it. He said the game is too slow in the film and it gives him a, a feel of a different rhythm. So for a guy that has mastered his reads and can, can get it done both with his arm and on his feet, it's pretty incredible that he's able to do all that without watching film. Back up to you, John. Thank you very much, Grace. And one of the things that A.J. Gray thought he needed to work on this year was to be more of a vocal leader. Right. But sometimes it's best for players. you got to be who you are. If it's in your DNA to lead by example, I love what A.J. Gray does. He, he's a leader, and he leads by example. So sometimes the emotional leader isn't what you need. I, I like the way and the way this kid comes and what he brings to the game. Now, at the next level, A.J. Gray is projected right now as he's heading to Georgia Tech. To Georgia Tech and you see the... The contingent from Catoosa County and Calhoun who've come down here for this particular ball game projected as a defensive back with all the tremendous offensive talent that he has. 
I know, but when you think about it now, he can return punts. Mm -hmm. And remember, defensive back, there's nothing more important now than playing defensive back because now the offense is spreading it out and they're throwing the ball. So you need guys that can move and have great explosiveness like A.J. Gray. The town of Sandersville rolled out at 930 this morning and they were on Main Street sending their team off with the white hankies from the pier. Washington County makes their way in. Trying to avenge what happened in 2013 and their loss to Buford in the championships. Calhoun, once again, we said, sixth appearance in their last seven years here under the big top, so they know what it's like to be here in a game 15 setting. You know, there's some pedigree down in Sandersville, mm -hmm. you know, Washington County. Takeo Spikes, yep. Auburn alum, NFL great, and the Edwards brothers right. played at Georgia. So, as you can tell, the electricity, the electric level has risen here at the Georgia Dome because, I mean, these two teams are, their fans are loud, they are rowdy, and that's exactly what you expect for a 3A championship. Joel Ingram, the head coach of Washington County in his ninth year, 85, 24, and 1 in his tenure. Assistant under Rick Tomberlin. Tomberlin had the three previous championships for Washington County in what they call the Golden Years with the Spike, with Takeo Spikes and the Edwards boys. As part of all of that, a lot of the legends are here today for Washington County to see them hopefully win in a game 15. On the flip side, for Calhoun, it is Hal Lamb. Hal Lamb, not a stranger to walking the sidelines here at the Georgia Dome. 16th season, 182 and 31, 18 years as a head coach in the state of Georgia overall, 187 wins total. He could clear 200 if he has a good season next year up at three. And when we said that the two towns emptied out, we weren't kidding. All of Calhoun is here. And all of Sandersville is here as well. Time for a Go Build Georgia kickoff. Learn a skill, build a career. Do it now at GoBuildGeorgia.com. Maybe a little a few butterflies going between both of these guys now in their stomachs. You think a few butterflies out there, Nelly? I'd ask you because you've been in this situation before. Oh, yeah, there are lots of butterflies right now until you get that first hit, you know, shake off the cobwebs. I mean, it's just a different level. And every play when you play in championship games is the, the literally the best play or your hardest play. You want to give that kind of effort when you're playing. Thomas Lester's momentum carried him back into the end zone. So you will see it at the 20. Once again, remember, when the ball crosses that plane of the end zone, it goes into the end zone, it is an automatic touchback. Comes out to the 20, and there's Kalen Riley, junior star quarterback. Interest already from a lot of big schools in the SEC. The Plains, the Hedges, and your Tennessee Vols looking at Kalen Riley, who's had a tremendous year. Big kid, 6'4", 205, lots of range. I mean, a prototypical, prototypical quarterback that college teams look for now. He can run, he can throw, great size. Calhoun will run out of the spread, but if you look at the numbers offensively and defensively. Still first down. And that is not the way to start an instant five yard penalty that'll move you back on a delay. Moves him back to the 15 yard line. Calhoun will run out of the spread. You see three receivers up high, one down low. But Riley will be more than happy to just tuck it and run zone read as you see here. First down, Washington County's defense stuffs him after about a game of three. Time to look at the offensive starters for Calhoun, brought to us by our friends at Regions Bank. It's time to expect more. Up front, Jack DeFore, Truett Moss, Spencer Cross, Drew McIntyre, and Austin Stout tackle to tackle. Receiver positions, Carson Brown, Thomas Lester, Chaz Moss, Cole Jackson will be running back, Landon Ross, a big tight end already looked at by Auburn. Pass incomplete at the first down marker, so it'll be third down and 12. Really interesting that Kalen Riley comes out both times. They come out with receiver strength to the right. And the first one, they run a power off the right side. Then they come out and do a half roll to the right. It's interesting they're trying to find something on that right side. They've attacked. We'll keep an eye on that. Third down, 12. Calhoun with the five-yard penalty out of the blocks. Riley looking to the marker. Caught complete. Once again, Thomas Lester passed the marker first down. Five-man pressure by the Golden Hawks. Washington County sends pressure, doesn't get there. Kalen Riley does an excellent job getting the ball out of his hands. 
Hand off to the inside right tackle. Big gash hole, 40, 45. Cross midfield tripped up at the 46-yard line. Big run there for the first down. And it's Cole Jackson on the carry, gain of 19. Nice job right here reading by Kalen Riley. Inside zone play. When, when you see that, you want to bang it. That's run behind the center's butt, or you want to bend it off the tackle's hip. Riley looked like he wanted to bang it. Nothing happening there as he tried to go up the middle. Nothing doing. Let's take a look at the defensive starters coming from the House of Pain. It's going to be pretty much eight up front. Odell Jones, Caesar Cruz, C.J. Davis, Logan Hunt. Your four up front. Linebackers, Wilk Conway, Antoine Butson, Ethan Ray. And in the secondary for the Golden Hawks, it is Dylan Hilson, Jaquavius Latimer, Lorenzo Watts, and A.J. Gray. Encroachment there as Washington County looked like they wanted to go all out on blitz. Didn't get back in time and they touched. Before the snap, encroachment on the defense. Five yard penalty, still second down. A little antsy there by number 50, Dylan Stedman and Caesar Cruz, number 96 at nose. You gotta be disciplined in there when you get a hard count from a quarterback. Second down, five. Stack was right, running right. Nothing happening there. Pursuit to the corner pretty much shut Cole Jackson down. Defensively for Washington County, once again, getting the big stuff. Well, good job by stacking the box because it's, it's what they're doing right now. They're forming a wall. That's what Washington County is doing. They had a seven-man wall. Then there's nothing inside. You're going to have to go outside. Dylan Hilson with the pursuit. Third down, about four. Riley with the dump off. Incomplete to Jackson. He had a lot of room if he held on to it. But it was thrown above him and beyond him. So let's see what Calhoun does here at the 40. You're kind of in an in-between yardage. Fourth down, three. And here's another look. Tough play. You got a, you got a swing route. He wanted to turn that head and get upfield, and it would have became what they call a wheel route. If he would turned his head around, it would have became a wheel route. It's an easier throw for Kalen Riley, but a tough one because he had to wait back there and decide what the fullback was going to do on that play. Washington County threatening blitz. Oh, they look like they're bringing six, five-man protection now. That's usually the philosophy of defensive coordinators. Riley looking for the change in play. Pat and Mouse still. Pat and Mouse game going on with Kalen Riley, offensive coordinator with Michael Davis. Tried to draw him offside, just mm -hmm. didn't happen. Back him up five to the 45, and it looks like they'll send out the punt team. Cat play and Mouse game. game. On the offense, five yard penalty, fourth down. Well, you see Kalen Riley communicating with his offensive coordinator going back and forth because it was going to be a six-man pressure. They only had five men to pick up the that blitz. So you got to make a decision because there was going to be a free runner. But again, you still got to be disciplined on offense. It's a nice chess match right now going on between the offense and the defense. Riley looked like he was going to go for it, set up at the 45 on a fourth and eight. And so Hal Lamb calls timeout to think about it. You know, you're a minute 40 in. And this is one of those big points because Momentum, if it swings here for Calhoun and they convert, it's huge early. Now, how did Washington County get here to a game 15 once again? Here's a look at your schedule. There's your region standings. Pretty much had it. Laney, Hepsiba, West Side, Augusta Butler, Josie, and Glen Hills. That was the region standings in Region 3 AAA. They ran the table in the region. And there's Calhoun out of Region 6 Triple. Daresville had a great year, as did Ringgold. There was a bit of a fight up top. Calhoun cleared the region at 8-0 as the number one seed. 15th region championship. This program is just one of the best in the state. Pond up in the air. Fair catch called for and picked up at the 10-yard line. 35-yard punt, no return on the fair catch, and it'll be time for Washington County to come out on offense. And yes, you see A.J. Gray walking over, but then you'll see him walking back. Five white is the state player of the year. The quarterback for Washington County, A.J. Gray. There he is. Dual threat. He can pass. He can throw. He can throw the ball a long way. One of the true talents that's come through in recent time. Handoff. 
left side gets a couple. Ethan Ray with the run off a of left guard. Not a whole lot there for him. Second down and eight. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for Washington County. Odell, Odell Jones, Jamon Brooks, Darius D. Dylan Stedman, Quentin Morris tackle to tackle. Then your receivers, Antonio Jackson, Jaquavius Latimer, Logan Hunt, one of the leading receivers, playing both ways. Will Conway playing both ways. And Darius Tucker at the tail. Great pursuit that time by Calhoun, stuffing the run off a of zone read. Let's take a look at the Yellow Jackets defense while we're thinking about it. You're going to see him send eight or drop eight. Landon Rice, Dustin Harris, and Blaine Anderson are the three up front. Five in the middle, Jira Wilson, Austin Bennett, Tristan Fuller, Thomas Lester, and Will Conley. And the defensive secondary, Malik Lawrence, Ethan Woodard, and Balin Spector getting quality time as a sophomore in the secondary. Third down, eight and a half. Let's see what the Golden Hawks do here. Thinking about pass pressure, gets away from it. Throws it from the 11, and are they going to call completion at the 25? Yes, they are. Just before the line of scrimmage, he gets rid of the football. A.J. Gray for his first completion. Well, he esca escapes the first level of the rush, does a good job getting the ball downfield. But you know what I like about what A.J. Gray did on that play? He kept his eyes downfield, and that is a great quality of the quarterback to find the open man. Antonio Jackson with the catch, that gave him the 26. Gain of 14 in the first down. Washington County will reset and they'll try it again. Handoff, nice cutback. 30, 35, 40. Spinning up to the 43 yard line. Ethan Ray didn't get anything off the left side on his first carry, got it off the right side in his second. Nice job on that play by Dylan Stedman and Quentin Morris on the offensive line at Washington County, doing a good job of zone blocking, so the running back can cut back. Count that, chalk that one up for the offensive line. Nice job on the backside. Gain of 17, gets it to the 43. First down, eight and a half for the first. Number one versus number two in AAA, Washington County and Calhoun from the Georgia Dome. Championship game two of seven here on Championship Weekend, right here on GPB. Whistles, and they're going to call procedure on Washington County and back them up five. Before the snap. False start on the offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Coming out and spreading it out a little bit here. Washington County, the offense, they got five wides coming out, and you can see they're going to put the ball in A.J. Gray's hands. They're going to let him win it with his arm or win it with his legs. It's going to be interesting if this Calhoun defense plays man or zone. See what they do here with five wide, three up top, two down low, looking across the scene, and a big hit at the 40, incomplete. Markevis Latimer, the intended receiver, he got wrapped up in the ribs. Let's take another look as Baylin Spector came up big. A.J. Gray gets somebody in his face. Landon Rice, number 44 over Calhoun, does a great job of speed rushing off the left side to make A.J. Gray have to throw the ball fast. That's why the ball was a little high that time, Nelly. A little high then. Nice rush. But that time they only rushed forward, and they played a zone then, so they got seven men in coverage. And if they can do that, that's what Calhoun said they wanted to try to do. We got whistles and a timeout called for by Joel Ingram. Personnel coming out late. Lorenzo Watts is coming out as the 11th man a little late. And with that, 7.59 for the first. Nothing's resolved here in a battle of number one and number two. Sandersville versus Calhoun. We'll come back to the Big Top right after this on the great GPB. Stay with us. The GHSA Championship is made possible in part by Regions Bank. It's time to expect more. Georgia's Electric Membership Corporation, lighting the way. Technical College System of Georgia, learn more, earn more. Cigna, together all the way. And viewers like you, thank you. The GHSA would like to thank the Georgia Farm Bureau. Welcome back, Georgia Dome. 7.59 for the first. Four minutes and one second played here in the first. Both teams have already burned a timeout. John Nelson, Chuck Smith here calling the AAA championship for you. There's Joel Ingram trying to talk things over with the Golden Hawks, who pretty much brought the entire house of pain with them <laughs> coming from Sandersville today. <laughs> You're exactly right. And you know, they travel well. And that, and that, but the point is, when you win the way Washington County's won, when you also win the way Calhoun has won, 
I mean, everybody gets behind you, and I love the way the communities are out supporting here at the Georgia Dome. Let's take a look at the pedigree for the Golden Hawks and what they've been able to do in their story this year. Triple-A finalist last year, lost to Buford, actually had a 14-0 lead on Buford here in the Georgia Dome. State champs, 94, 96, 97. That's the Spikes and Edwards years. And they definitely can't touch him right now in Central Georgia. 15th region title this year. Tomberlin right there, 157 and 31. Went 14 seasons. TKO, Robert Edwards, yep. Terrence Edwards. TKO, Takeo Spikes doing a great job with the NFL. You know, does a lot with the league. And, and he still has, I believe, the biggest net in the history of football. <laughs> <laughs> he is yoked up. Yoked up in a mean streak to match. 5-1. Zone read. A.J. Gray found a hole. Left garden tackle. 50, and he's in the clear. Is anybody going to grab him by the ankles? Yes, down at the 27-yard line. Gain of 35 for A.J. Gray. Nice read by A.J. Gray pulling it out, and he's reading his defensive end. Reezy, Reezy cuts inside of him. But look, excellent block by number 85, Antonio Jackson. Does a fantastic job downfield helping spring his quarterback. Watch this. This is what you look for. It's a team effort. You'll see 85, excellent job fighting and scrap and keeping his block. Balin Spector kept it from being a score, but then there's the pressure that you've been talking about early on by Calhoun. Send it downstairs to Grace Olson. Grace, what's up? Hey, we've seen some good blocking from that offensive line. A.J. Gray doing a lot, but it takes the offensive line as well to help out there. And uh, Coach told us that that line is really the heart and the soul of the offense. He said they don't expect the credit, and they call themselves the, quote, quiet professionals because they do their work in the shadows. They don't receive the credit, but they sure do a lot for that, A.J., and the rest of those skilled players, guys. So you've got the Navy SEALs reference for the offensive line going up against the Decepticons and the Transformers defensively. Tunnel screen doesn't do much of anything. Right now, A.J. Gray, four rushes, 36 yards. All of them except for that one came on that last carry. I like what I see from Calhoun on that play. You see a bubble screen here. I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, ten defenders around the ball swarming, and that's one of the, the, the – that's exactly what Calhoun said they want to do. Got to swarm. Four on the football for the tackle, loss of five. Third down now and 15 from the 32. A.J. Gray thinking home run ball, moves to his left, and the loop pass works inside the 20. First down, Washington County down to the 12. A gain of 20 for the first. Well, we've talked about the difference between man eyes and zone eyes. Right here what you're seeing is zone eyes. The defensive back, they're in the zone. And the challenge here is, you're in the zone, and what happens is the receiver sneaks behind. Antonio Jackson slips right behind the linebackers. There's that pass we've seen Nick Marshall do a lot in the last couple of seasons. Draw him to the line of scrimmage and then throw it up over the top. Hand off to the inside. Ethan Ray with the carry. Gets it inside the 10, down to about the 8. And you want to take away something. Calhoun has to figure out they're going to have to take away the run or the pass right now. You got Washington County. They have... Basically, they pick up whatever they want to do, run or pass. You got to stop one. Second and five from the eight. Heavy formation, twin tights. Gray looking zone read. He's going to take it inside the five. Finds the corner. Touchdown, Washington County. Five white goes eight yards for the first six on the board. 5.36 to go. Touchdown replay brought to us by our friends at the Technical College System of Georgia. Well, what I see right here is a counter OG. Excellent job by number 50, Dylan Stedman, leading his quarterback, A.J. Gray, around the left side. As you watch me stalking his prey, excellent block by Dylan Stedman to spring his quarterback for the first touchdown of the game. Keeping Thomas Lester at bay off of the corner. 90-yard drive for Washington County. PAT is up and good, so Washington County gets the first seven on the board with 5.36 to go in the first. What would you call the offensive line of Washington County with the grace just called them? Quiet professionals. They're living up to their billing right now. Nice job. They set the tempo on the first drive. Great blocking, great effort. So Dylan Stedman obviously 
pulling for that. There's your scoring drive once again brought to us by our friends at TCSG, the Technical College System of Georgia. Learn more, earn more. 11 plays, 90 yards, 90 yards in 435. Ooh. I know A.J. Gray's going to Georgia. Well, he's committed to Georgia Tech. Uh huh. He kind of looks like another a quarterback that plays at Georgia Tech right now. His face mask, the way it runs, he reminds me of Justin Thomas. Uh huh. Man, I mean, I know he's going to be a cornerback right now. He finishes up and goes through his commitment with Tech. But, whoo, that's a weapon Georgia Tech's picking up here now. Well, as you and I both say, what happens when someone says they're committing somewhere? <laughs> that's when recruiting actually starts. And starts. Love them up even more. When Kick they make off. Down to the two. Calhoun coming back with a big hole in the middle out to the 27, 28 yard line. We caught up with Joel Ingram in the locker room before the game. Here's what he told his Washington County Golden Hawks. One more time for this program, for this community, for yourselves, okay? And men, I love you. I tell you that a lot. I know I do, but I love you, and it's no bigger honor than go into this, y'all. And all I'm going to tell you, I know you guys will not let us fail. You will not let us fail. You will not let us fail. Go out there tonight and impose your will. I've seen you do it. I've seen your resolve. Now we got to bring it all into one. Let those emotions boil over when we get out there on that field, okay? Right now they're doing exactly that. 520 for the first inside handoff. Kalen Riley will hang on to it. Gets a couple, clears the 30, gain of four. Coach gives me chill bumps. Got me motivated up here, man. Oh, yeah. Joel nice Ingram is always one to get the folks motivated. That's right. I like it. That's how you want your team to come out and put it on them. That's why that should be your mentality. Once alignment, always alignment, carry the mentality with you. Out route, incomplete. Nice defense off the backside. Kalen Riley, once again, incomplete passes. They're trying to work the far side of the field right at the marker. Incomplete third and six. Well, nice coverage by Lorenzo Watts, the senior, gets his hands in there. The philosophy you want, I want to be close enough to smell the receiver's breath. <laughs> figure, like that? Figure out, what he had, figure out what he had for lunch. <laughs> exactly right. Good tight coverage. Lorenzo Watts, another legacy for the Golden Hawks. The Watts family, Stacy going all the way back. A great part of the program. Riley forced to scramble out of a tackle. Crosses the 40 to the 42, maybe the 43 first down. Calhoun, they'll move the sticks. And so far, Washington County has kept Calhoun from getting the tempo there. Yeah, and they're doing a good job covering downfield there right now. They're in a zone, so no one's open. But good job that time by Kalen Riley giving Ethan Ray the stanking leg and getting slipping by him with a nice move. A little screen gets it across the 45 to the 47. Gets you five there. Completion to Chaz Moss. And if you're Calhoun, you got to think about we got to make some plays. We got to get downfield. We got to give Kalen Riley some easy throws, some easy plays to make to build up the confidence just to get into a rhythm. Get him involved in the process. Second down six, they gave him four. Riley, flanker wide open, 40, 35, 30. Dodges a tackle, tackled by A.J. Gray. Down to the 26 yard line. Big completion to Carson Brown. Well, it looks like a pick, looks like a rub off. The receiver's crossing. Looks like did a good job of rubbing off the defensive back. No one was near when Carson Brown caught the pass. Big yardage there. There's Cole Jackson. Change of pace up the middle. You see that a lot in zone read offenses. Is it what they'll do? That first down play, they'll just run it to see what the defense does to react, and they'll save it for later. Yep. Michael Davis is trying to dial him up and get his team back in it. Get him in the rhythm. Four wide for Calhoun. Riley looking, going far shoulder, and it's going to be incomplete. Dropped by Thomas Lester as he was heading for the pylon. Beautiful throw by Kalen Riley, where only his guy could make that play. Over his right shoulder, that was that was a excellent throw. Drops it right in that corner. Nice mm. working right there. Beautiful. Beautiful throw. Ethan Ray on the defense. Third down nine, have to get to the 16-yard line. And Calhoun's going to call another timeout. 
Downstairs to Grace Olson. As Calhoun does it again. All right, we've seen a little bit from Riley there. He's mixing it up a little bit. And Coach Lamb told us he actually looks at Riley as as an emerging A.J. Gray, if you will. He said he's kind of taking on some of the characteristics that he takes on at quarterback and doing some some of the similar things. And these teams are obviously, they haven't played each other all season long, but they're, they came into the season highly ranked, ranked at the top, and, and everyone's been wanting them to play all season long. So they're finally getting that, and they're obviously comparing every aspect of the game. The quarterbacks, obviously a big thing to compare, guys. Thank you very much, Grace. Total yards right now. Calhoun 87, Waco 95 got 90 on that touchdown drive of theirs a couple minutes ago. Just a junior. Just a junior. Well, just got a the junior growth curve well, yeah, for another big, season. That's right. He's 6'4, 205 pounds. He's been through for 2,345 yards, 23 touchdowns. Has a bright future. Lots of teams are starting to look at him in college, but let's move forward to this play. To me, you got to give him a run pass option here, and I would look at throwing the ball towards the middle, watching the Washington County defense just starting to play that single high safety over the top. It's going to be something. Now they got two high safeties over top. Three wide. Riley looking to dump. Complete the Cole Jackson wide open. First down inside 15, close to the 10 yard line. That's what they'll give him. Gain of 15, first and goal, or maybe even first and 10. Let's look at the spot to see if it's first and goal, Calhoun. Well, I figured they would give them exactly what they did, a half roll to give them the run throw option. Exactly what you want, Cole Jackson, in the right spot at the right time, doing what he's supposed to do. Jackson's getting lost in the traffic so far. Standard first down zone read handoff up the middle. Gets him about three. It's been a workhorse in the playoffs. Cole Jackson getting the handoff right there. Busy man here in the first quarter. Tackle by Lorenzo Watts and Antoine Butts there in the middle for Washington County. So they did give it inside the 10. So it is second and goal as Calhoun tries for the equalizers. We're under three minutes to go here in the first. Riley rolling. Dump off. Jackson. Touchdown Calhoun. Washington County having problems accounting for Cole Jackson. Most of the offensive plays so far, and it gets, it gets them six right here. Same play they just ran to the right to convert the third and nine to Cole Jackson. A half roll, give the quarterback the option to get him out in space, and that's exactly what you want to do, and that's how you want to answer if you're the Calhoun offense. Touchdown replays always brought to us by our friends at the Technical College System of Georgia, TCSG, earn more, learn more, earn more. Ten plays, 72 yards. In 238, and the PAT is up and good, and we are tied at seven. Let's take one more look at it. Washington County's just not accounting for 28 darts so far. <laughs> and we talked about the transformer offense. They can run it, they can throw it. You transform now into a half roll team, short passes to the backside of the backfield. Because what did we say earlier in this drive? That that Washington County was playing a deep zone. Mm -hmm. So now you got short receivers coming out with short passes for the back, running backs out of the backfield. That's how you beat those deep zones. And that's how you get the equalizer. 250 for the first. And we are tied at seven. And when Calhoun got into a rhythm, the first possession, Washington County kind of kept them at bay. Then it was big in the second drive to give Kalen Riley that rhythm that he needs. And I love the design of offensive coordinator Michael Davis at Calhoun. How he short, easy passes. Get Kalen Riley, number one, your quarterback, in the rhythm. He's a dual threat. He came out and ran for a first down. He came out and threw for three first downs and one for a touchdown. Kick off deep, picked up at the 5, 15, 20, and met. Take it out to the 25 yard line. Darius Tucker will return it. And the punter, Jonah Landry, 99, ended up making the tackle for Calhoun. So let's see what Washington County can do to counter the Calhoun scoring drive. And all eyes in the state. There are a lot of individuals from the next level who are staring at five wide on the sidelines. They were in pregame. And they'll continue to do so over the next three plus 242. Quick pass, slant, complete. Out to the 30. 
Get you a good six yards there. Jaquavius Latimer with the catch. Had three catches last week for 18 yards. Nice job getting the ball out of your hands. AJ grade number five. Just getting it out. Short pass. Trying to loosen up the, the running game. The run defense of Calhoun a little bit with his arm. Second down four. Inside handoff. Crossing the 30 to the 32, gain of two, cuts the distance in half, so it'll be third and short. Darius Tucker again with the handoff, big tackling there in the middle. Dustin Harris at six foot 260 right there in the middle for the Yellow Jackets. Landon Rice, number 44, Dustin Harris, number 73. Two big time players in the middle. Blaine Anderson, he's not chopped liver either, number Ooh. 52. This is a strong Calhoun front three. Landon Rice being looked at as a tight end right now by Auburn at 6'5", 255. A.J. Gray fakes the handoff, trying to get to the edge. He does. First down, 35 to the 40. Eight-yard gain for A.J. Gray off the left edge. Move the sticks. Yeah, he gives Austin Bennett a little stutter step. I call that a two-piece right here. Give him the two-piece, <laughs> and I'm gone. <laughs> I mean, that's just making the play. We talked about his playmaking ability. Remember he said he doesn't study film. That's... That was a net, just being a natural. Okay, explain two piece for me a little bit. Just a little stagger move, that little doot to doot. Yep, that little one two. Big handoff, right guard, right tackle, 50, 45, 40. Out of bounds, close to the 30 yard line. That's where they will spot it once again. Ethan Ray, the change of pace, give it down to the 28 yard line. So a gain of 32. Man, nice run by Ethan Ray. But even just as good a block is by Marquise Latimer, number 25, blocking downfield to help spring his running back. What I'm seeing right now, this Washington County well coach receivers are blocking downfield. Dale Inspector with the push out of bounds. First and 10 at the 28. Inside handoff, gets you two, maybe three. Once again, Darius Tucker. Jaira Wilson in there for the tackle for Calhoun, three black. Jairo Wilson, another one of the players for Calhoun that will play both ways. We'll see a lot of that. We'll see a lot of him on offense and defense. He's 6'1", 200 pound junior. Seeing Will Conley throwing his body around a little bit, number 18. Gain of two, second and eight. Power right formation. Play action. Floated and almost intercepted. Looking for Logan Hunt. And it looked like A.J. Gray let that one get away from him a little bit. Yep, in cover two in that zone, got the safety right over the top waiting. So if it's an overthrow, there's a chance there's going to be an interception. But might have been it's a little high. Trying for a little touch, a little, little too touch. much touch. A little too much touch. Now here, same thing here, A.J. Gray. I'd expect him to give him the option to run and pass and possibly roll into the left where there's a lot of space. Big heavies in formation, following his block. Nice seal, 20. First down, 15, out of bounds at the 12, down to the 10 is where they'll give it. Gain of 16 and a first down for A.J. Gray. Hits it to the left in space. When you think A.J. Gray, you want him in space, he gives him another stutter step here, springing him for another five yards. These receivers are blocking downfield, doing a great job. Calhoun secondary's got to do a better job of getting off of the blocks because Antonio Jackson's winning right now. Dylan Stedman again, the pulling guard off the right-hand side, sprung A.J. Gray to the corner. Inside handoff down to about the five-yard line. Ten swinging mouthpieces on the ball. It's an old coaching saying I used to hear from Billy Henderson. We want ten swinging mouthpieces. Ten swinging mouthpieces. That means... When the play is over and you let your mouthpiece out, it's still swinging. That's 10 men on the ball. Nice gang tackling that time by Calhoun. And this is an interesting chess match as you watch Washington County banging inside and then they're taking it to the outside. It's a tough, tough recipe right now for uh, this Calhoun defense. Let's see what happens. First quarter is in the books. Nothing is resolved. Washington County scores first. Calhoun follows it up. We're tied at sevens, getting ready for the second quarter on the great GPB. Stay with us. twice before crossing. You exercise, you choose the salad occasionally, but when it comes to staying well, physically, financially, emotionally, going it alone is hard. So Cigna has your back and your knees 24-7 in sickness and in health. 
answering your questions, giving you some coaching, helping you get well and stay well. That's having a partner who's with you all the way. Signa. At the heart of our community are the businesses that don't skip a beat. Georgia's electric membership cooperatives stand behind local commerce. Whether keeping farms running or shining a light on new ventures, we bring business, large and small, to our communities. Creating jobs, driving development, supporting dreams. Georgia's EMCs, powering our businesses, lighting the way. Don't get shut out of your future. Without a high school degree, this door will always be locked. Stop the Drop, a message from Georgia Public Broadcasting. Washington County and Calhoun keeping our eyes glued to the TV so far with the tied score 7-7 seven to seven heading in to the second quarter. Now we've been talking in football all day long but it's time for you to weigh in. We're going to ask you a trivia question. The question for this game is which head coach led Washington County to 15 and 0 seasons and state titles in 94, 90, 94, 96 and 97. 15 and 0 records and state titles all three of those years. Find GBB Sports on Twitter. Find us on Facebook. Give us your answer. And I'll return in the fourth quarter with a winner who will receive two tickets to the College Football Hall of Fame. What could be better? Make sure you weigh in quickly. John? And when you say quickly, I mean quickly because uh, for those who have been paying attention to the broadcast, <laughs> the answer might have already been disclosed, but we're not going to tell you who it is. You're going to have to have the fingers to do it yourself. And there's your total yards from the first quarter. A.J. Gray, 101 yards on his own, and Calhoun had 112 as a team. Handoff up the middle. Are they stopping at the one? Answer, yes. Justin Lawrence with the quick handoff up to the one. That quick blast play. Looked like he was going to score, but he got pulled back. Just shy of the goal line. So Washington County three feet away on third and goal. Second play of the second quarter. Good push by number six, 69, Jamon Brooks in that offensive line of Washington County. A.J. Gray looking for signals from the sideline. He has to call timeout on his own to figure out what Joel Ingram wanted to do here. Joel Ingram, you see him munching the gum pretty hard. Obviously, he's going to have a bit of a discussion what happened there and what the play was supposed to be and what it hopefully will be for Washington County if they can get it called correctly for the second play of the second quarter. So far in the game, Washington County four of four on third down conversions. And if they convert this third down here, then they will have taken a six point lead. Washington County, no stranger to playing deep in the playoffs. Last six years, with Joel Ingram as head coach. There was the finals appearance last year. Had a 14-0 lead on Buford and a 13-0 lead on Buford. Lost 35-19. Lost in the quarters to St. Pius. Two first-round exits, uncharacteristic of them. And three in a four-year stretch with Stockbridge, America, Sumter, and Woodward Academy. And then they ran into a very tough Peach County squad. Head coach by Chad Campbell. Lost in the second round back in 2009. They've won every game this year by double digits. They've been dominant. One of the most prolific yeah. offenses in AAA in all of Georgia high school football, for that matter, putting in over 51 points a game on average. Let's see what they do here. Double wing block, handoff, 
And it does not happen. Big stop there for Calhoun. The handoff to Ethan Ray. Ethan Ray, great penetration that time. Jira Wilson with the stop. Coach described him, Coach Lamb described him as a tremendous pass rusher and leader. 23 tackles for a loss. Nice tackle. I like the way he grabbed him and pulled him down from the waist down. And that's what you want to do. You got to stop his momentum, particularly when you're on the goal line. Washington County going to go for it here. Fourth and goal from about the one and a half. They need five feet to score first minute. A.J. Gray takes it himself. Touchdown. And they quick snapped at that time. At least it seemed that way. A quick snap as we look at our technical college system of Georgia touchdown replay. I don't think anybody in the building was surprised it was going to run the ball then. <laughs> the Gatorade player of the year in the state of Georgia. One back power. Who made that most famous in the SEC? One Mr. Tim Tebow. Quarterback power. That's exactly what he ran. It's, it's tough to stop on goal line. And a Tennessee guy actually references a Florida guy? Yeah. yeah. Revolutionized the game with Tim Tebow with that one back quarterback power. So AJ Gray with the plunge from about five feet out. Washington County with the lead. One minute gone here. Second quarter from the Georgia Dome. More in the AAA title game when we come back. This moment. Getting here took three years of sleepless nights and postponed vacations. Your dad said, play it safe. Your husband kept the faith. But franchising is why you partnered with Regions in the first place. We share your vision for moving forward. And at moments like this, Hi, Steve. that makes all the difference. Is your business at a turning point? Regions. Welcome back to the Georgia Dome. One minute gone, second quarter. Washington County scores to make it 14-7. And Chuck, this was the, the game we pretty much anticipated. It was going to be a bit of a tennis match. Here's your scoring drive brought to us by our friends at TCSG. Learn more, earn more. 11 plays, 76 yards covered in three, 42. Well, one of the keys for Calhoun was to keep A.J. Gray off the field because when he has the ball in his hands, they score. This is the, the greatest scoring machine Georgia's ever seen in high school. So the key for Calhoun is to keep him off the field, but he's been extending drives with his arm. He's been extending drives with his legs. And so it's just one of those things that you got to figure out a way to slow him down. When you, and then you throw in the running backs that are making yards. And so it's just a, it's tough right now, but he's a playmaker. 102 total yards of offense at the four feet that he got for the score. So it's 103 total yards of offense for A.J. Gray. The feet in the arm. And the Pierce County game in the, in the, in the quarterfinals where he went for four spins, 422 yards and eight scores. They were down in that one. They were down to Blessed Trinity. So bucking the trend of the last couple of weeks, Washington County coming out on the board first and having right. to play with a lead. But I see why I also mean, well, coach, I've caught Antonio Jackson number 85 out twice, and it's because he's blocked downfield and sprung his quarterback, doing an excellent job. The offensive line, Jamon Brooks, the entire line, doing a great job. Kick in the air short, picked up about the 14, 25-30, looking for a gap. Out to just outside the 30-yard line, and once again, Thomas Lester back deep. We'll put Calhoun in good, in good field position to start their next drive. Man, I just watched Darkavius Swint, number 11, run downfield, and he almost knocked somebody out of this Georgia Dome. <laughs> See the, those, those rappers up there, those championship banners with the Falcons? Mm -hmm. He just hit a, a Calhoun player. It wasn't even funny. Wasn't fair. Mama like, eh? <laughs> Kalen Riley goes off and left guard and tackle, gets it to about the 33, so a gain of two. Once again, good pursuit by the Golden Hawks that time to keep the gain to a minimum. Well, you see Washington's defense, Washington County, they're not going to let this Calhoun offense run. He's had some success with his arm, Kalen Riley. they got to throw it, and then they're going to have to open up the run with that. Will Conway with the tackle, 23 right. And the Mercer wide open downfield, blows a tire inside the 40. Big game that time for Chaz Moss. They're going to spot it at the 37, gain of 30.
Moss got lost in coverage, and you'll see it on the left-hand side of the screen. Well, the quarterback does an excellent job here, getting the ball out of his hands. Excellent job by Kalen Riley, number one, getting out of the pocket, setting his feet, and hitting the wide-open receiver. There's your roll. And Moss just went right by the corner. Blows the tire for the big game handoff. Faked on first down. Riley with the B button move, but it doesn't work. Logan Hunt with the tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Shoestring tackle. Mm -hmm. Got him down. That's all that counts. Just got to get him down. Nice move, though. Big Riley, B6'4. He's got a little wiggle. Mm -hmm. A little dibble and a little wiggle. It's nice. With your, with your one two dance step. What, now, did, you, what did you call it's it? It's called a here? two piece. Two if, piece. You got, if you got two feet, you can only change direction off of what? Two steps. Right. So it's called a two piece. Okay. Give him a one step, jump cut. Motion stack, right, handoff on the sweep, inside, 25-20, knocked out of bounds. And Oliko Dennis getting some reps as a sophomore, and let's take a look at the sweep. Good job by Oliko hitting the corner, getting in space. I like these afterburners right here. Nice burst by Oliko. I like that name too, Oliko Dennis. Picking him up and putting him down. Yep. Blown out of bounds. Dennis with the handoff again, fake to him. Riley keeps it inside the 20, down to about the 16, gain of two. Oh, Logan Hunt on the hunt does a good job making that tackle. Georgia Southern commit. Mm -hmm. Good work by the Washington County defensive end. Big boy. Antoine Butts, number 30, also in on the tackle that time. Once again with Washington County, you're going to see folks like Hunt and Conway and A.J. Gray playing both ways. They've been used to doing it for quite some time, so it's not a, an unfamiliar setting for them. Riley looking, drag route, from behind the receiver that time, once again looking for Thomas Lester incomplete. Excellent protection that time by the Calhoun offensive line. Spencer Cross, Truett Moss, number 71, Drew McIntyre. But there's no one open. Quarterback has a lot of time. Deflected. Nice hops there. Hands in the air. C.J. Davis. Yep. C.J. Davis with the big hands. Third down and eight. Take the handoff and we'll dump it. Knocked off the shoulder pads in and out of the hands of Aliko Dennis. Incomplete. So let's see what they do on fourth and eight. A lot of success so far here with the swing passes, the backs out of the backfield for Calhoun. Off the helmet. Yep. Got to get your head turned around, Oliko. Fourth and eight. Setting up for a field goal here. And I say setting up. Alex Flores in for the kick. Spot kick. Does it have enough of a draw to it? The answer is no. Flores from the right. Hash. Didn't get enough of a draw to it to get it through the upright. So let's get another look at it. Just show you what we're talking about here. All the way from the right hash. Tried to put a little draw on it, but just not enough, and it's wide right. Drifted a little bit to the right. That's big for the Washington County defense. Mm -hmm. Anytime you, you have a team that goes all the way downfield on you and controls the ball, controlling the clock on that drive, to get off the field without giving up any points, is, it's huge for the Washington County defense. Let's see what Washington County now does on offense. A.J. Gray will hang on to it. Great undercut there to keep it, the game from being huge. Knocked his feet out from under, maybe got him a yard that time. Will Conley, the senior linebacker, six foot, 190 pounder, made the great lunge to keep the gain at a minimum. It's the heart and soul of this Calhoun defense, the outside linebacker. 57 TFLs in this group this year, which is amazing. And this is what we kind of thought we might see if the game was going to be a 50-49 game. Each team averaging seven yards of play. Handoff right guard and tackle. Let's get you another couple of yards. So it'll be third down and about seven. Darius Tucker with the two-yard game. There's Conley again. Will Conley, number 18, does a great job. Six foot 190 senior. 
does a good job of keeping his shoulders square to the line of scrimmage, making tackles. That's what you want to do. You want to limit the running back's ability to go two ways. Nice work, young man. Got to watch the scramble here. AJ Gray winding up and knocked away. A little too high for the receiver. Intended for Marquivas Latimer that time. Okay, let me take you in the mind frame right now of the Calhoun defense. Yep. They're all saying, yes. I mean, when you just miss a field goal, you get out here and you got an offense that you haven't stopped yet, and you get them out three and out, you're excited going on that sideline because now you got a chance to change the field position and you win. And you win on the field position battle right now, turning it around after the missed field goal. Flip the field. Yep. 7-14 for the first half, back in confirmation. A long time to get that punt away, but it does go away. The 42-yard line, knees hit the turf. Punt to 35, no return. That was almost a block. That was almost a block punt then. Yeah. That, that was close. It took a long time for that punt to get set up, but when it did get away, it got away. I wonder if Michael Davis, the offensive coordinator at Calhoun now, is thinking maybe let's get to put the ball in the air a little bit. Paying attention to Dr. Rush. Slam, first down. Chaz Moss. Trying to get Kalen Riley, Kalen Riley in rhythm again. Washington County sending pressure. They're playing man-to-man -man in coverage. Calhoun's trying to loosen them up a little bit. Gives him advantage anytime you blitz six. It's so only going to be five in coverage. Four in the pattern right now for Calhoun. Three down low. Cole Jackson at the tail. And off big hole, left guard down to the 30. Tries to hang on to the football, moves it down inside the 25 for a gain of 23. Nice work by number 71, True of Moss, three year starter, strong. Does an excellent job. Spencer Cross at center do a good job of creating spacing. That's all you want. You just want to just enough to scoot through there, just a little crack. Riley with the football down inside the 20, down to about the 19, so that'll give him five. We need Riley, Kalen Riley, number one, the quarterback, to cover the ball up when he's running in traffic. He's, held, he's holding it out there like a loaf of bread now. Right, coordinator. I'm the coordinator. I'm watching that and saying, let's go for that strip. Good when you leave the store bad on the football field, right? <laughs> That's a good point. You're exactly right. Malico Dennis at the tail. Gets the handoff. Both hands on it. Turns the corner. 15-10-5. Touchdown, Pelham. Malico Dennis 19 yards, and we are one play away from being tied at 14. Touchdown replay bought to us by our friends at the Technical College System of Georgia. I love number 63, Drew McIntyre, Austin Stout, number 75. But guess what? It sprung this time from Calhoun's receiver, number 22, Malik Lawrence, doing an excellent job blocking downfield to help his running back get a touchdown. Both of these teams blocking well on offense, getting after an excellent play. Kick in the air, good. We're tied at 14. Well coached football. They're all dancing and moving this together right now in Calhoun for the offense. One more look going to the left-hand side of your Watch screen. downfield. You'll see number 22. Watch this. This is what you look for. Excellent job fighting, keeping blocking. Nice work by Malik Lawrence, number 22. Coach said he's coming on in the playoffs. Doing an excellent job. It's the little things you do to win the championship. Oh, that make the big difference. Locked up Lorenzo Watts. Let's go downstairs. Grace Olson, who you got? All right, I got two pro. They, they were just watching that last year. I had to finish that out. But I've got Terrence Edwards and Dakio Spikes, two former pros and two former Washington County players. Coach told us about the special relationship that you guys have with these players. He told us specifically with you that one of your qualifications when joining, when starting your network TV job was to be close to Washington County. Um, what's this experience been like for you continuing to work with the team that you played for in high school? Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's unparalleled because like, I realize it's, it's, 
part of my responsibility that the platform that I've been placed on is to br bring back exposure to the kids of Washington County. Uh, I too was that kid. I was in the same position that they were in. And the only thing that drove us was hope. And so now myself being able to get as far as I have with Terrence, Robert Edwards, Demetrio Stevens, so many other guys, Josh Gordon, so many other guys. Uh, we just, this is our way of giving back. And Terrence, coach told us that with AJ, you have a really special relationship as well, a very mentorship. Uh, describe that relationship that you have and what an extra special player he is. He's a great player. And I, this relationship started when he was two years old. Him and his sister Alicia was always in the gym when I was coming up. And Coach Gray was my coach, their father. And uh, he took me up on his wing and taught me a lot of things. So I just think it's my responsibility, to, like Takeo said, to do the same thing for his children. Uh, I talked to Alicia as well, uh, um, AJ, on a weekly basis. Just to let them know that I care about them. Uh, we all from the same town. And everybody in this town has to stick together and uplift everybody. Well, I know everything you guys do means a lot to this team, and it'll go far beyond this football field. But uh, great job, and enjoy the rest of the game, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, Grace, representing the Twin Cities of Sandersville and Tennell very well. Takeo Spikes and Terrence Edwards. Good guys. AJ Gray takes the hand off. Wrap up quickly. Thomas Lester again. One of the strategies when we talked to Coach Lamb was they're going to have a mole guy every time, a mole player on A.J. Gray, At meaning least one. somebody's going to be accountable to him every time. And I believe it's set up to be to the, to the the on the edges every time. I believe they have the outside linebacker set up. If he goes left, someone has him to the right. One of the other guys has him. Thought about ducking in, in the open space, in and out of the hands, incomplete. Antonio Jackson, the intended receiver. Jackson had it and had some space behind him if he'd been able to turn, but it's incomplete now. Third down, 13. Struggling a little bit right now to find open receivers. They have a two deep zone, safety zone right now, does Calhoun. And, you know, not letting anyone get over their head. None of the receivers. Washington County so far. Four, six, third down. AJ Gray looking to do something. Settling down. Looks like it's complete to Logan Hunt outside the 45 yard line for a first down. Move the sticks. Nice job, AJ Gray finding the open man. You got a three man rush. Eight in coverage that time. Those were zone eyes, so everybody's playing in a space. All the Calhoun defenders playing in space. Good patience that time by AJ Gray, keeping his eyes downfield. You see him looking, looking. Excuse me, Ethan Ray, I need to complete a pass. <laughs> Nice catch. Great presence of mind by Logan Hunt to make sure that the elbows hit first. And off inside, close to midfield. Get you your three on first down. So it'll be second down at about seven. Inside zone play looks like a mosh pit. <laughs> it does. Everybody's coming up, hitting each other. On this replay, look at the, the mosh pit. Everybody just banging each other. Ethan Ray, five to six, gets you three. Look at all the black shirts getting to the ball. That's how it used to be back when you were in college at the club, huh? Just slamming. <laughs> I don't have any rhythm today. What makes you think I had rhythm back then? <laughs> Take the handoff. AJ Gray will take it close to the mark. It'll be interesting to see if they give him six or if they only give him five for a third down and short. Looks like the spot is just inside the 45. So let's see what happens here. Nice bounce pickup by AJ Gray off the low snap. Calling him at the 45, so it'll be third down and three feet. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they run that quarterback power. AJ Gray right behind the guard in the center. Two tight ends. And he goes to wide with it to the near side. Pursuit catches up with him. Loss of three and a flag late. So let's see what this is. Yeah, it surprised me they had success Austin on the Bennett. touchdown. Austin Bennett in there, but let's see what the flag is. If it's on Calhoun, it could flip the sticks here. All right, there's a grab of the jersey. Yep, face mask right there. That was a face mask. That wow. That was a bad Personal one. foul, face mask on the defense, 15 yards from the end of the run, first down. But again, a lot of times 
when you're trying to make a play, you stick your arm out there and you hook that face mask and it just happens really fast. It happens really fast. But nonetheless, you never want to give a team a first down on a penalty. That's one of the rules of defense. Nothing easy, nothing cheap. Pretty much what we expected, an even game across the board. First down's tied at 10. Good personal foul penalty. Changes a four from three to a first and 10. Just outside the Calhoun 33. 319 and counting for the first half. Swing pass, try to get a little space. Complete small gain that time for Jaquavius Latimer. Maybe three as the clock continues to go. Coming up on three minutes to go first half. A.J. Gray's tired, getting tired. You see they're trying to get the ball out of his hands, kind of give him a breather here. Give a few quick passes out, as we just saw. Just watching his demeanor, is his, the way his body's moving. You can just tell he's a little winded now, but when you're playing in championship situations, you got to play. And playing both ways go. in championship situations. That's a good point. Heavy set. Gray hangs on to it. Not much there, if anything. No gain, so we'll call it third down and eight. Well, we call that juice. Right now, he doesn't have the juice. You can see here. I mean, he's not as explosive on this play. I mean, that's almost a gimme. So, you know, they got to keep being creative. But also give a lot of credit to this Calhoun defense. They're swarming. They got 11 swinging mouthpieces on the ball every time. So Ran into Thomas Lester and Dusty Baker. Third down and eight. Close to the Calhoun, 31. Four into the pattern, five into the pattern. Scrambling, Gray against his body, complete. Inside the 20, down to the 15. First down again, Washington County, and again, it's Markevis Latimer. Does another great job. Malik Lawrence, number 22, they're playing the zone. They're playing cover two, he's way too deep. There's already a safety over top. There's a safety right now over the top, and number 22 has to be up tighter. And you know, they play a good zone, but everybody has to be where they're supposed to be. Four wide with the tail. Handoff bounces. Ethan Ray inside the 10, down to about the eight. That was a nice cut. Nice cut by Ethan Ray. Good vision as we're under 90 seconds now. Let's take a look at what the defense is staring at when Ethan Ray's coming at him. Well, nice job by Ethan. Ray does an excellent job of you always run a run to daylight. Austin Bennett with the tackle, second down and three. Heavy set formation, left guard. Close to the first down. What are they going to do here? Where are they going to spot Ethan Ray when he was finished with his business? Coming up on a minute now. Washington County and Calhoun each with one timeout. Let's take a look and see what happened. Inside zone, good job right there. Bounces it out, cuts back, nice movement. COD, I like Ethan Ray. He's got great change of direction. Logan Jones with the seal. First and goal, they gave it to him. A.J. Gray trying to find the outside. You said he has no juice, and he got wrapped up about the 12. Right now, he's a little juiceless <laughs> from the standpoint of he's carrying the ball a lot. I mean, he's headed towards 200 yards total offense by himself in the first half. He's a little tired. It's going to be important for the other playmakers to make plays to help A.J. Gray as we go into the second half. Timeout called by Washington County to give him a bit of a breather. 43 seconds to go on a second and goal. And one of the missions here at Georgia Public Broadcasting is about the recidivism rate, the dropout rate here in the state. Stop the Drop is the initiative dedicated to preventing high school dropouts here in the state of Georgia. We ask students to do their part by finding out how the problem affects their community and preparing a 30-second PSA that tells us all about it. The best PSA, which we will reveal at the end of the weekend, wins a $2,500 scholarship. Stay tuned to find out today and tomorrow who our 2014 contest winner is and what ideas they have about how to stop the drop. Very cool initiative that we have here at Georgia Public Broadcasting, reminding everyone how important it is to be in school and the benefits of right. staying in school and getting from high school to the next levels. Yep, going to Clark Central High School was just a special time in my life in Athens, Georgia. And got a chance to graduate, play in the 1985 state championship. We were the 4A champs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a... He only waited until under a minute to go in the first half to remind us of that. Well, I, I was waiting. 
to all the gladiators that are listening they're all around the state of Georgia and abounding around the country. But Ethan Ray, I'd give the ball to Ethan Ray. Play Ethan action. A.J. Gray looking high into the end zone, going for the height of Logan Hunt, incomplete. I was expecting to run then. They've had so much success really running the ball recently with number six, Ethan Ray, and running the ball in between the tackles with the inside zone. Tenth play of the drive coming up here for Washington County on a third and goal from the seventh. Five got, minutes and 15 seconds so far on this drive. Ray's got to get his juice back here now. Five in the pattern. Nice to go for a forced pass into double coverage, looking for Jaquavius Latimer. Incomplete, and now it's fourth and goal. Looks like Joel Ingram's going to send out the field goal unit. Three-man rush that time by the Calhoun defense. Twenty-four yard field goal attempt here. Mr. Barry is up and good from 24, and that'll do it for the Washington County drive. And you know that Joel Ingram wanted four more points than what he got. Yeah, and I know he did, but I'm telling you, defensive coordinator George Hoblazell for Calhoun, he's ecstatic right now. Anytime you can keep remember, I want people to understand this is the greatest offense statistically George has ever seen. And anytime you can keep points off the board, particularly seven, you've done a good job because the way it's looking, this Calhoun offense, they're not taking the back seat right now to Washington, but I think it's going to be a track meet the rest of this game. Whoever scores last will probably end up being the winner. And, and the, concerns, the, the concerns were that the higher the score, the more it would fit Washington County. There's your scoring drive brought to us by our friends of the Technical College System of Georgia, TCSG, learn more, earn more. 15 plays, 63 yards in 525. And the lower scoring that this game would be, the more it would benefit Calhoun. Well, what did Coach Lamb tell us when we were both talking to him on the conference call? He said, well, we don't want to have to get up into those high numbers. We want to try to keep them off the field, but, you know, give them a lot of credit. that They're going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and that's what we expected. These are the number one and two teams from day one in AAA. This is what we expected, a dogfight in a track meet. Looks like they're going to call offsides on the kickoff attempt there by Washington County. Interesting twin set. Encroachment on the kicking team. Five yard penalty, re kick. And so they'll try it again. Yeah, I noticed that on when I was watching film, the Noah's Ark kickoff team. They had guys paired up in twos. <laughs> it so took I, me a second. <laughs> but as I'm watching it, it's really unique. I've never seen a kickoff team do it, but I think it's to, you know, what's happening is right now Calhoun's kickoff team, they're counting numbers. They have a number that they're accountable for. So I'm sure it's built around the twists and the turns and, and keeping, you know, the Calhoun off balance. And I, but so I it's like, like a shell game, basically. It, it, I'm accountable for this guy, yeah. but if he's not in the position I'm right. used to. I got to chase him now. Calhoun's looking like they're going to have to chase because Washington's in there. They're Noah's Ark kickoff team. Kickoff again inside the 10. Bringing it out. 30, big hole for Lester, 40. Flags flying in all over the place between the 35 and the 40, so it's probably going to go back. Thomas Lester once again giving Calhoun great field position to start as we're down to 18 seconds. During the return, holding on the receiving team, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul be first down. So with about two plays that you can do with 18 seconds in the return of 33 before it goes backwards, with the return there, back yardage, you've got about two plays that you can do in 18 seconds. So the larger question is, what do you do in this situation? I'll tell you what I do. I play it smart, run the ball out. I'd run the clock out because A.J. Gray, if he gets the ball in his hands at free safety, he's taking four back this year for Washington. He will get juiced if he gets his ball in his hands now when he realizes there's only 18 seconds left and he's got to make a play. I'd be careful here from Calhoun's offense putting it up high, particularly to the left side. Three receivers up high. Looks like it's going to be man coverage, at least at the line of scrimmage for Washington County. 
And it's just a handoff and it's a bunch of clear out blocks. Kalen Riley, 45 to the 48 with 11 seconds. Nice job by the Calhoun offense. Instantly, you've seen Coach Lamb timeout, 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 because now you got the ball at, we're at the 48. Yeah. 48. Now you can take a shot. I take a shot here. I take a shot downfield. I try to, you got 11 seconds. Can you get, say, 25 yards and maybe try a long kick? Because what is his range? What's his kickers? What's where we are? Let me look at my stats here. He said he can kick one from around, what, 45, somewhere so, in there? Okay, so that's the 28 yard line. So you got to get to the 28. So you've got about a play and a half here that you can play with with 11 seconds. So if you can get 10 or so, then it gives you a shot to the end zone. Or if you get 20 or so, then you might be able to get that shot to the end zone with a field goal attempt with 11 seconds to go first half. And I agree with you there. And if I am Washington County, if I'm the Golden Hawks, if the ball is intercepted, I'm pitching it back. Right. I'm taking a chance. I'm Doing it like Deion Sanders did here 18 <laughs> years ago. I pitched it back to A.J. Gray and said, let's roll. All right, four in the pattern for, for Calhoun. Kalen Riley rolling, good protection. Lester again out of bounds at about the 38, 37-yard line. So that would be a 54-yard field goal attempt with four seconds. Here's your pressure. Excellent job by number one, Kalen Riley. Does a great job managing this series. Runs one, does a good job getting the ball out of his hands. Now they got a shot, you know, it's a long shot, but maybe get the ball to the end zone, get a touchdown. Three in the pattern down low. Riley's gonna load up and see what happens. See what happens behind the coverage, knocked down by A.J. Gray. Close. Too close for the likely of Washington County, but Calhoun took their shot. Kalen Riley had it in the end zone. But number five, A.J. Gray coming into your screen. What do you do when the ball's headed your way to the end zone? Knock it down. And he does exactly <laughs> that. Here's your look. Never try to catch it, ever. Rule number one, never catch it. Never okay. try to catch it. Smack it down. Grace Olson downstairs with Joel Ingram. Here with Coach Ingram. Coach, no one really knew what exactly to expect coming into this game. Two very stout defenses, two, two very stout defenses, two very highly productive offenses. Have you been caught off guard by anything so far? No, I mean, we knew they were going, they're going to be great. They play, play fast. I mean, the thing I'm aggravated about is our defense, we got to get more stops. Uh, we're not making plays on defense. Uh, they're, they're sort of taking the fight to us. Uh, and then offensively, we ought to continue to block. And then defensively tackle is just fundamentals. But we knew it was going to be just like this. And, Probably second half is going to be a real fun half to, go, to watch, too. And you talked about how that man coverage was going to be necessary to stop them. Right. Do you still have the same thoughts at this point? Oh, yeah, I think so, because we got to commit defenders to the box because they're so effective running it. So, I mean, it's give and take. They're going to make some plays on it. So, you know, we just got to continue to do it and pick our poison. One final question with A.J. I mean, obviously, we've seen what he does. he's done offensively. He, made, he broke up that pass, you know, there in the end zone. How do you keep him as revved up and fired up throughout the rest oh, of the game? I don't worry about him. He, he stays even kill. If this game went eight quarters, he could do it. So I don't, I don't, he's one I don't worry about. All right, we'll see you in the second half. Guys. Grace, thanks very much. We're getting ready for the uh, halftime show, GPB halftime show here at the AAA game coming up. We'll hear from both marching bands, plus John Nelson traveled to Washington County and has a story on A.J. Gray, the quarterback there. Plus, Grace Olson will check in with some proud parents, and then we'll tune in online to see what you guys have to say about this head-to-head -head matchup between the two only undefeated teams in the state of Georgia. It's all coming next on our GPB halftime show. So, hey, you better not touch that remote. This program on GPB is made possible in part by supporters of the Georgia High School Association, including the following. Animal agriculture is important to Georgia. Our farmers work hard each and every day to take care of our animals across this state. Hi, I'm Ziffy Duval, President of Georgia Farm Bureau, and we're proud of our partnership with Georgia High School Association. Just as we teach our children to work hard and accomplish goals, we take care of each other like a family. We as farmers across this state love our animals, and we work hard to take care of them too, don't we, Jen? Visit us online at gfb.org. Hey, great party. Oh, thanks. Here you go, one hamburger, medium well. Uh, this is well done. No, 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 that's medium well. What? 
Are you calling me a liar? This thing is practically burnt. That's it. You're not gonna come to my house and tell me how to cook a ham. Yeah, like, ah, really you wouldn't do it there. You gotta be crazy. So don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. Right now I'm about a hundred feet high, traveling at about 50 miles an hour, just thinking about where I should go next. Do you have any ideas? Visit us on our Georgia Traveler Facebook page. Gotta go! Today, companies in the aerospace, advanced manufacturing, and film industries need skilled workers, and the earning potential is high. Go Build Georgia can show you where the jobs are and what skills you need to get them. And the Technical College System of Georgia has fast, affordable training for these great paying careers. Build your blueprint for success at GoBuildGeorgia.com and look to the Technical College System of Georgia to put your plan into action. Some questions can't wait until morning. So I'm one of many nurses at Cigna with answers anytime, day or night. I'm Lauren, and I've got your back. I'm not sick. I'm not sick. I'm not sick. She's perfectly healthy. Cigna covers preventive care. That's having your back. Welcome back to the Georgia Dome. We are live on GPB on championship weekend. The 3A school championship game half over. One champion has already been crowned today. Two more to go on this great weekend here on GPB. And the score at the half here is Washington County leading Calhoun 17 to 14. Washington County getting a couple of touchdowns from their outstanding quarterback, A.J. Gray, as he ran from eight yards and from one yard. Calhoun countered with a couple of touchdowns of their own. Washington County kicked a field goal late in the game, late in the first half. And so that's where we stand right now is 17-13, Washington County on top. Now let's check in with the Washington County Band, or the Calhoun Band right now, brought to you by Regions Bank. That's the Washington County High School Marching Band brought to you by Regions Bank. And you saw big number 53, Toquan Worthen there playing his instrument. So that was great there. Let's check in now with our social media correspondent, Grace Olson. Grace. Thank you, Mark. You know, guys, this isn't just an on your TV experience. This is a second screen experience. Isn't that all how we watch sports TV now? That's why I'm here to show you on this big monitor some of the things that people are saying about this game, because obviously it's an exciting game. It's been tied for a lot of the time. So. Here's our first tweet. This is from Washington County. Uh, they say, can't be many people left in Waco, GHSA Championships 2014, because obviously the stands are packed and it is loud out there, guys. And then here's a photo of some Calhoun fans, These, this group of lovely ladies. We want to know if you could tell us who they are. We're trying to identify them. We want you to go tag them on Facebook if you know any of those ladies. So please do so soon if you do. Also here we have a post on our Facebook page 
from K. She says, we're ready for some football. Earn it, Waco Golden Hawks. And then we have some more Cal Calhoun fans who say, let's do it, Yellow Jackets from Calhoun. Georgia, baby, let the jacket sting. So we have a lot of people watching online, on TV, on the app. And uh, we have another from a Waco fan who says, Waco Hawks, I know y'all are bringing home the title. So now, Mark, I'm going to send back over to you. That's our social media for now. Man, social media blowing up all over the place. This is great. All right, well, let's check in with Raven now for a session of Are You Smarter Than Your Students? And a very interesting principal here who has a lot riding on this game, I think, Raven. Not in a minute, Mark, but um, it's not just competitive on the football field. It's competitive between the two principals. The Calhoun principal, Mr. Green, was just yelling at me for trying to give away answers. I don't know why he would accuse me of that. Well, I, I, I need some answers myself. Oh, no, you, hey, this is, I don't do that. I don't do that. Y'all are going to answer it fair and square. I want someone special, as Mark mentioned. You've got someone out on the football field you probably care a lot about, your son. Yes, ma'am. He's uh, AJ, number five. He's my son. And as, uh, as all of the kids, I'm very proud of all of them and I'm proud of him all of his accomplishments uh, this year. Very blessed. Now, I got a question. Is he more likely to get in trouble or not get in trouble since you're the principal at school? Oh, he no, he don't get in any trouble. <laughs> that is not an option. All right, all right. Let's play Are You Smarter Than Your Students Now? Principal Gray, you better not mess up because your students are going to get you if you don't get this answer right. Listen, y'all have no idea the trouble I'm going to be in <laughs> if I don't get this answer right. All right. So here is your question. Jingle Bells is largely known, obviously, worldwide to be a Christmas song. But what was it originally written for? Now I'm going to give you some multiple choice answers here. A, Halloween, B, Thanksgiving, C, St. Patrick's Day, or D, Fourth of July? Can I get a lifeline? Nah, you got to. Can I call the audience? Uh, you can call the audience. I don't know Ain't if they're going to call yet. that. <laughs> okay. Think, think. Jingle Bells. Tur turkey. Make a turkey sound, but I don't know how to do that. Got Thanksgiving. There you go. I guess now I got to give a hint to the other principal. You got it right. Thanks so much for playing with us, and thank you for all you do. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Definitely. Back over to you, Mark. Thanks very much, Raven. You're a soft touch. They're helping out. Coming up on the GPB Championship Weekend Halftime Show, we're still more to come. We'll hear from the Calhoun Marching Band. Plus, John Nelson draft travels in. He checks in with A.J. Green, the quarterback of Washington County. Another round of Are You Smarter Than Your Students? And we'll meet the proud parents of one of the players. It's all ahead as GPB's coverage of the GHSA Championship Weekend continues right here on GPB. This moment, getting here took three years of sleepless nights and postponed vacations. Your dad said play it safe. Your husband kept the faith. But franchising is why you partnered with Regions in the first place. We share your vision for moving forward. And at moments like this, Hi, Steve. that makes all the difference. Is your business at a turning point? Regions. The new College Football Hall of Fame and Chick-fil-A fan experience puts fans closer to the game experience. Featuring over 30,000 square feet of college football interactive exhibits. Tickets available at CFBHall.com. Your corporate sponsorship of GPB lets all Georgians know of your support for quality programs that educate, inform, inspire, and entertain. Email us at sponsorship at gpb.org. Thank you. This program on GPB is made possible in part by supporters of the Georgia High School Association, including the following. Developing leaders for Georgia agriculture is very important to us at Georgia Farm Bureau. Hi, I'm Zippy Duval, president of Georgia Farm Bureau. Just like high school athletics, it develops leaders for our community and our state. We at Georgia Farm Bureau think it's just as important to develop the future leaders of Georgia agriculture. Our national security depends on it. Take advantage of Farm Bureau's many services, from multi-line insurance to money-saving discounts. Visit us online at gfb.org. There's just one place where students are students first, and athletics are played with purpose and perspective. That place is your local high school. 
High school sports offer more than the joy of competition. Studies show that student athletes are also likely to enjoy greater levels of achievement in other areas of their lives, including academics. High school sports, a winning part of a complete education. Welcome back to the GHSA Football Championships Halftime Show live on GPB. Let's check in with Raven Toronto now. She's got the Calhoun principal, Mr. Greg Green, standing alongside. Raven? That's right, Mark, here with Principal Greg Green. Now, you were trying to get the answers from me earlier. That's exactly right. <laughs> right look good. Well, yeah, okay. Well, listen, what's going on in Calhoun? Well, we've had a great fall. This is our fourth state championship to compete for. Uh, our softball team won the state championship. Our competition cheerleaders won the state championship. One act play, we're runner-ups. We're really excited about being back in the Dome this year, and uh, a lot of great other things happen. All right, quit bragging. Now you got to answer the question right so they can add another championship to it. All right, so here's your question. What holiday will celebrate its 50th birthday in 2016? A, Christmas, B, Hanukkah, C. Kwanzaa, D. New Year's. Kwanzaa. Ladies and gentlemen, he's right. It's a guess. It, it was a guess, I guess. Anyway. Thank you. Thank you so much for all you do. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, back to you, Mark. All right, let's check in now with the Calhoun Marching Band, brought to you by Regents Bank. That's the Calhoun Marching Band brought to you by Regions Bank. Great job. Now let's check in with my colleague John Nelson up in the broadcast booth this time for another edition of John's Georgia. John, take it away. Thank you very much, Mark. Brought to us by our friends at Georgia EMC. We're going to spend some time in Washington EMC and let you in on the story that we did about one of the teams that's playing in this particular ball game who has the player of the year, and they wanted to do anything they could to get back to a game 15. Classification. Tenth play of the drive here for Washington County. A.J. Gray going for the bundle. He's got someone in back behind coverage. Touchdown, D.J. Sanders. That was how the AAA title game scoring started for the Golden Hawks in 2013, but Buford ground out another title at the end of 48 minutes at the Georgia Dome. So 2014 is another chance to get back to where you once belonged. Washington County head coach Joel Ingram, though, is using the look back to keep moving forward. People are still patting us on the back about last season. And every team is different, and uh, just not we don't ever look at rankings or anything like that. And just my whole my whole lesson has been: what can we do to stay on the cutting edge? How can we stay ahead of defenses? How can we stay ahead of offenses? How can we keep improving to where we can make this thing a consistent thing every year? And they'll do it with probably the state's player of the year in A.J. Gray, an electric two-way player with a quiet confidence seen by his brother at practice every day. You've always, honestly, we've been raised that way. I mean, you do what you're supposed to do. If you're good at it, hey, you're good at it. You don't have to boast and say, oh, I'm the greatest ever. No, we just do your job. If accolades come, we take them in stride. So the obvious part of his own game that A.J. thinks he needs work on is? Just being a vocal leader because I lead by example. And for someone who's as softly spoken as you to be a vocal leader, how much of a challenge is that? It's going to be a big challenge, but I think I can do it. <laughs> For all these homegrown kids, to chase another title is a blast, and going against close friends makes it even more so. Oh, it's fun. Uh, it's very intense because you're basically playing against your best friends, and you know each other's weaknesses and strengths, so it's um, real fun to play against each other. And all those players like Will Conway and A.J. Gray, they've been together since they were sixth graders as part of the Washington County program, Mark, and they would love to finish up their careers with a win here in game 15 under the big top. All right, you're John Nelson. John Georgia brought to you by Georgia EMC. All right, Raven, take it away. <laughs> now let's check in with Grace Olson for another edition of Rent Check. Where's my rent money, Grace? 
Becky, this is where we check in with the parents and see how much they know about their kids. I've got Heather and Russell DeFore, the parents of Calhoun's Jack DeFore. And I also have Will, who's a, a great friend of the team and who helps out. So thank you guys for joining us. Let's show a couple baby photos of Jack when he was a little boy. And while everyone looks at those photos, we're going to ask you the question for the day. The question is, uh, would he rather play offense or defense if he could only choose one? You want that one, Mom? No, Mom, Dad? Uh, he'd rather play offense because that's his best. Uh, he thinks that's the best opportunity for him to move on and play college ball. And he also told me there's nothing like celebrating in the end zone with your best friends. So thank you guys for joining us. We're going to bring in your T-shirts. You answered very quickly and correctly. There you go. Football Fridays in Georgia. And I'm going to send it back up to the set. Thanks, guys. Now time for our career play so of the game much. presented by the Technical College System of Georgia. Despite the changing job market in the state, many Georgians continue to find solid careers in the field of industrial technology. Careers include machine operators and designers, as well as industrial system managers and machine tool technicians. Areas of the field that are growing include cutting edge trades like robotics and industrial design. It takes training and technical skills, but these jobs are available. You can build your own career. That's why industrial techno technology is back in the spotlight as our career play of the game. This message is brought to you by the Technical College System of Georgia. Visit them at tcsg.edu for information on starting your career. You ready for the second half? I am. Right. What, you, what do you, you think is going to happen? It's the only battle of unbeatens, and I think one of these teams is going to win, but it's been a great showdown so far. Chuck and John are back with a second half call right after this timeout. You look twice before crossing. You exercise. You choose the salad occasionally. But when it comes to staying well, physically, Financially, emotionally, going it alone is hard. So Cigna has your back and your knees 24-7 in sickness and in health. Answering your questions, giving you some coaching, helping you get well and stay well. That's having a partner who's with you all the way. Cigna. Georgia cotton farmers want you to know cotton is grown in 91 Georgia counties on over 1 million acres. Cotton makes a $2.5 billion economic impact and accounts for over 15,000 jobs in Georgia. Cotton's innovative production has lowered water use per pound of cotton by 75% since 1980. One bale of cotton can make 215 pairs of denim jeans or 700 towels. Cotton is a natural choice for Georgia. Sea Island. With three golf courses and a golf performance center, beach, spa, and more. The destination for families and golf groups. For information and booking, SeaIsland.com. This program on GPB is made possible in part by supporters of the Georgia High School Association, including the following. It's been said that championships aren't won by individuals. They're won with team and teamwork. Hi, I'm Zippy Duval, president of Georgia Farm Bureau. And we're proud of our partnership with Georgia High School Association Athletics. In all of our county farm bureaus across the state, we have a championship team ready to deliver services to you and your family and all of Georgia farmers across this state. We invite you to come to your local County Farm Bureau and be part of our team. Go team! Visit us online at gfb.org. Here with Calhoun's Coach Lamb. Coach, it did take a little while to get things, the chemistry going offensively. Do you think the jitters are, are maybe gone at this point? I mean, you really fired it up there later in the second half. First. Yeah, yeah, it's new to us, obviously, but it's new to them too. But... You know, the bottom line is that we got to get off the field on third down, and we got to convert some third downs on offense. Third down is killing us right now. And you told us about with A.J., I mean, obviously a threat to be reckoned with, and, and you're going to have two, three spies on him. Do you think you're able, you're executing your plans defensively? Yeah, I think we're doing a good job with him. He's a special player, and he, he causes a lot of problems defensively. But, you know, we're going to keep doing what we're doing. Hopefully we can wear him down, and hopefully we can come out with a victory. Best of luck in this half. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Guys? Thank you very much, Grace. Getting ready for the second 24 minutes. And you've got Calhoun coming after it, Washington County coming after it. I'm John. This is Dr. Rush. Actually, hashtag <laughs> Dr. Rush. And 
you're looking at the first half. We knew that we were going to have a treat with A.J. Gray being a special player. And Washington County actually got out in front of Calhoun and putting points on the board, and they didn't have to fight from behind. Well, exactly right. And Calhoun, they came out and they were efficient. They were able to do, be, use a dual-threat quarterback. And Kalen Riley did a good job of running the ball, creating plays with his legs, and also getting the ball out of his hands and winning with the pass. All right, let's take a look at the first half highlights and show you what we've been talking about here. And there's A.J. Gray. You, you were talking about the line play being huge there. Well, yeah, good exactly seal right. To get the good first job. seven. And then they were having problems accounting for the Jackson. fullback, for Cole Jackson. Does a good job catching out the backfield. Good job here at A.J. Gray. Quarterback power. And, and then Oliko Dennis. Oliko's done a good job. Good job getting to end zone. For a sophomore, doing some, getting some really big reps for Calhoun. And this was the play where they tried to get the slant in there for the game leading score at 21-14, but it didn't happen, so it ended up with the field goal at 17-14, and Calhoun had their chance at the end of the half. What is the scary throw right here now? Kalen Riley gets it out there, and just at the last second, who knocks it down? A.J. Gray does a good job because the receiver was behind him. All day, A.J. Gray. <laughs> First half numbers, what pokes out at you? Well, really what pokes out on me is the fact that A.J. Gray is really hasn't dominated the game. He's been efficient, but right now I think Calhoun's done a pretty good job of limiting his true explosive plays. And pretty much even numbers, which is what we'd expected. Total yards only difference by 33. A.J. Gray with a lot of the rushing yards for Washington County. And I'm really, I was really excited and surprised to see Cole Jackson, how efficient he's been when it comes to running the ball and also catching the ball out of the backfield. But I'm really really excited about the way both quarterbacks played in the first half. You know, Kalen Riley's done an excellent job for Calhoun, and, you know, A.J. has done a phenomenal job. A.J. Gray's done a phenomenal job of basically being pretty much the entire offense so far. 61 rushing yards for A.J. Gray on the net, 75 passing yards. Ethan Ray with 75 rushing yards leading Washington County. Four separate receivers. Catching passes from A.J. Gray, and it's time for our Go Build Georgia kickoff. Learn a skill, build a career, do it now at GoBuildGeorgia.com. I'll tell you something about both of these teams, though, that stands out. No turnovers in the first half. Right. Which is part in, of being a well-coached team. In a championship the, game. That's exactly right. Limit your turnovers. Pooch kick picked up by Logan Hunt. And he evades a tackle at the 30, out of bounds about the 37, 38 yard line as the scrum ends up going out of bounds. And that's where Washington County will start the second half. Yes, Dave! And let's see what they can do. And with A.J. Gray getting a bit of a blow for 15 minutes or so, you think we can get his, see, get his juice back for the second half? <laughs> well, which was a big point that you made, especially late in the second quarter. It seemed like he was. He was uh, running on a little less than E. It looked like it was D in the gas gauge a little bit. Well, he was a little tired, but, you know, championship games, the playmakers have to step up and stand out and do some things that that's what makes them special. Being able to Fourth persevere. Paul Stark on the offense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. And that is not what that man wanted for his first play of the second half, for sure. Moving back five to start off first and 15. 30 rushes for 277 yards, three TDs. Amazing. That offense. So let's see what Washington, Washington, yeah. see what Washington County can do here. One set back, power set with two receivers, two tight ends. Hand off inside, right guard and tackle. Gets it over the 35 to about the 36. So maybe three. Get you a second and 12. Yep, inside zone play. It's a staple of this offense. Anytime you run the spread, you want to start it inside and work outside. Landon Rice, among others, in on the defense for Calhoun. Second down, 13. Logan Hunt rushing off the field. Three in the pattern right now for Washington County up high. Let's see what happens. This point took a little too long to develop, and the handoff to Justin Lawrence gets nothing, maybe a yard. Nice stop by Landon Rice, number 44. Does a good job getting off the block. Good job wrapping his arms around the ball carrier. 
That's what you want to do. Knock them back. Knock them back. Drove the mesh point closer to the line of scrimmage where all those bodies were. Those ten hanging mouth guards yep. in the trenches. <laughs> You're picking that up. Good. First big test for Washington County. Third and 12. Gray scrambling, looking long, thinks about it again, and sacked inside the 25. Dustin Harris, among others. The blocking broke down in front of A.J. Gray, and it was a great, I guess it's a great coverage sack, I guess you could call it, for Calhoun. Well, nice job by the defensive coordinator, George Hoblazell. This is a 3-3 stack. This is the first time on third down they brought a fourth rusher. Excellent job. So what, what you saw then, A.J. Gray got confused because he had more pressure. He didn't have as much time as he's been having to find an open receiver in the zone. Nice counter by the D.C. George Hoblazell. Blocked. And deflected out to the 40. And that's where Calhoun will take over the first big break of the second half. Jairo Wilson coming in clean on Luis Guerrero. Here's another look. A little low snap, but he almost. Jairo Wilson dies almost over it. ate the football <laughs> by the time he got there. The punt took a long time to develop. We said that earlier in yeah. the game. The first punt, we, we talked about that, and it came back to kind of bite him in the butt a little bit. Let's see what happens here with Calhoun's first possession. Second half, Landon Rice in motion up to the top. Great ankle tackle that time by Dylan Stedman playing both ways for the Golden Hawks. Loss of a yard on the carry. Great defense, great penetration that time for Stedman. Anytime you run in zone runs, that was an outside zone. You want penetration. You want to restrict the running lane. That's what he did. There's Riley's numbers, 168 total yards of offense, first half. Play action. Drag is there, and it is incomplete. Calhoun fans are wanting a flag on the coverage by Lorenzo Watts, but they're not going to get it. It'll be third down and 11. Golden Hawk defense coming up big. Calhoun tried to catch him with a play action pass. Kalen Riley gets the ball out of his hands. Nice throw on the move. Lorenzo Watts over the top with the right hand right there. Good defense to create the third down opportunity. Multiple fronts by Washington County's defense. The Golden Hawks. One deep safety, and that was A.J. Gray wide open. Is it going to be called a catch? Yes, it is. First down, Thomas Lester. Great jump, gain of 12. The defensive back fell down. Great catch, though. Excellent catch. And Riley, and there's the knee right there, getting it inbounds. Great catch by Lester that time. And Riley almost threw it too far to the corner, mm -hmm. trying to get it to the marker. Almost put a little too much juice on it. Heavy right, handoff, down the edge, inside the 20. Once again, Cole Jackson getting good yardage on first down. Gets it inside the 20, down to about the 17. And only first down again, gain of 11. Well, we talked about last week when we talked to Coach about Landon Rice, number 44, moving in the backfield, doing a good job sealing the edge. Does a great job, does the Auburn commit, doing a good job sealing the outside linebacker that time of Washington County. Again, Riley following the blockers, cuts it back, touchdown Calhoun. <laughs> Kalen Riley, 17 yards. Calhoun gets the lead. Up three, looking to make it four with the PAT. Here's your touchdown replay, Botros by our friends of the Technical College System of Georgia. Great job blocking. It starts with number 44, Landon Rice again. 6'5", 255. They're lining him up as a wing, putting him in motion, and blocking down on the defensive end, creating a soft corner. Touchdown for, for Calhoun. And the PAT was missed. It could come up huge later on. 
Kalen Riley keeping it in his own hands. Calhoun gets the lead, 840 for the third in the AAA championship, one versus two at the Dome. What is by moonlight an empty field is by the magic of electricity, sacred ground. As the official energy provider of the GHSA, Georgia's electric membership cooperatives proudly support our student athletes. We are there, illuminating the glory moments fans just have to see. Capturing the hustle, elevating champions, sharing the win. Georgia's EMCs, empowering our youth, lighting the way. Welcome back to the Georgia Dome. That is a long-standing mainstay hey, you know. of the House of Pain. Their super fan is always there on the sidelines. And there's Kalen Riley. Kept it in his own hands for the last 17 yards. Five plays, 40 yards in 68 seconds. Scoring drive brought to us by our friends again at the Technical College System of Georgia, TCSG. Learn more, earn more. And right now, there's your up-to-date numbers. Just under 200 yards of total offense. And the pedigree that that man has been a part of at the Reeve. Hal Lamb, two-time state champs, 2011 and 1952. Big for them to beat Buford in overtime back in 2011. And we said it in the open, sixth trip to the finals to a game 15 in the last seven years. Yep. But when you run into the buzzsaw that is Buford three straight times, then that's what happens a lot of the time. A lot of folks have been losing to Buford in the last decade and a half. 14 straight region championships up there in Northwest Georgia. And Hal Lamb has put together a great program up at Calhoun. And when you look at Kalen Riley at quarterback, this program produces quarterbacks. Nine, eight all-state quarterbacks since 2007. Michael Davis, the offensive coordinator, knows how to get as much out of his quarterback as anybody in the state of Georgia. Here's the pooch. Logan Hunt picks it up at the 23, found the corner, out of bounds. The 37, 38 yard line, lost control. But here was the last drive for Washington County. And they've been having their hands full with the Calhoun defense. Well, they try to run a zone, inside zone, nothing there. Same thing also, struggle, nice play that time. Struggling a little bit. And there's all that pressure that you talked yep. about, adding a body. Adding a body. And then the special teams. That was nice. He laid out. Looked like Superman. Jaro Wilson almost mm -hmm. ended up getting the football in the ribs. He came in so clean. First and 10, Washington County. A.J. Gray up the middle, just inside the 40. Gain of about two. I'm starting to watch Landon Rice heat up a little bit now. Mm -hmm. Getting off of blocks, because we talked about A.J. Gray maybe not having as much juice right now because he's been running the ball so much. I thought he had a lane here. I yep. saw a crease. All of a sudden Landon closed Rice comes up. out of nowhere. It closed up really fast. This Calhoun defense is swarming right now. And we knew that there was going to be at least one spy, if not two, on A.J. Gray the entire time. 51 yards rushing now for A.J. on 15 carries, and we got whistles. Looks like they're going to go back five more. Before the snap, false start. On the offense, five-yard penalty, second down. Joel Ingram walking backwards five yards. Still working the gum pretty hard. Second down, 13 now for Washington County. Calhoun defense, the 3-3 three, three stack. Mm -hmm. Middle linebacker, nose guard, and the free safety are the most important positions. Big on this play here. See if they send eight, drop eight, or put it somewhere in the middle. Down the seam, Logan Hunt, or excuse me, thought it was Logan Hunt. But it was picked up by Antonio Jackson. Good pickup, thank you, sir. Antonio Jackson had one go through his hands in the first half, picked it up this time around. Yep, they brought that fourth blitzer again that time. They brought that fourth D lineman. He ends up, and that's where he comes from. Pickup of 18, tackle by Thomas Lester. It's a big play. Big play for the Washington County offense. And this might be a big play as we go. Looks like Washington County has called a timeout early in the third. Obviously, Coach Ingram hot about something. 
No <laughs> offense has scored over 18 points on this Calhoun defense. So they've been successful, too. As much as we talked about Washington County's defense, Calhoun, they're not used to giving up points. They're, they've been roughing up teams all year, too. So, you know, two good offenses, two solid defenses. And, you know, that right now, they're. I mean, it's almost like they got 15, 16 defenders, yellow jackets out there. And that's probably what A.J. Gray is seeing. Yeah, he's probably seeing a lot of folks out there and a lot of numbers coming across the line of scrimmage. Now, when we talk about the whole experience here at the Georgia Dome, we ask that you not just watch the game. Engage, be a part of the process with GPB Sports on social media, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We want you to be a part of the GPB Sports family. There's a lot to see, a lot to do. So find GPB Sports on Facebook, Instagram, and at GPB Sports on Twitter. Nice point handoff fake. Gray looks like he gets two and hits the ground. Ball came out obviously after he was tackled, so it'll be second down and eight. And you're getting a lot of folks keying on A.J. Gray now. Landon Rice once again in in the gaggle. See, because it isn't a swarm of jackets normally. Oh, yeah. So they're trying to think of something else <laughs> to call them. They're stinging right now. 53 okay. yards for A.J. Gray on 16 carries. John Rob Wilson, number three, they're all coming. Anybody that we focused on in that first 11, they're there. A.J. Gray looking to load up, and he does. And it is out of bounds as he was looking for Jaquavius Latimer that time. Excellent protection by the Washington Golden Hawks offensive line. I mean, Darius Reese, number 51, Dylan Stedman. Mm -hmm. They're giving them time. But there's a chess match going on right now between the O and the D. Right now, the D's winning. Calhoun's playing a, a, a game of cat and mouse with man and zone. That time, it was zone with no pressure. Dropping eight. Yep. 60% on third down so far in the game. A.J. Gray dropping. Looks like he got deflected. Lofts it in there nicely. Complete inside the 25-yard line. Missed Latimer last time. Found Jaquavius Latimer this time. Moved the sticks. Gain of about 24. Jaira Wilson gets back, but he throws it just right over his fingertips. Nice touch by A.J. Gray sitting in the pocket. There you go, right there. It's a good catch. Nice run. Get a little yak. Yards after the catch. Nice run, Jaquavius. Lofting right there over the defense into the hands of the tall receiver. First and 10 from the 24. Gray pressure up the middle, rolling to his right. Thinks about it. He's going to eat the football and get maybe a yard. Wanted to try to direct some traffic deep into the pattern, but it didn't happen in time. And once again, Thomas Lester. Seeing him on special teams, seeing him on offense, seeing him on defense. A full day for two black. He's a hybrid. That's what Coach described him as. Coach Lamb says he can play. He's a safety slash linebacker, but I like his decision that time. Don't play in space. You got to sometime take a shot. Because you and I know at that point, A.J. Gray was going to run the ball. He came up and took a shot, and he won on that one. 9 of 16, 115 yards right now for A.J. Gray. Low snap, picks it up. Right guard and tackle, finds a hole, gets the first down. Inside the 15, ball scored and loose. Out of bounds at the 13, and that's where they'll spot it. But move the sticks, gain a 10. Nice job right there. Quentin Morris, offensive line number 77. Good job by Jamon Brooks, Darius Reese. Nice work by that offensive line to spring him out of there. That off these offensive linemen are working. Quiet, but effective. First down 10, Washington County. Call up the 13-yard line. And another flag. Illegal substitution on the offense. Five-yard penalty for first down. Illegal substitution that time. And another first down penalty for Washington County. So when you think you get the momentum of a first down, a first down penalty, whether it's motion, right. this time an illegal substitution, six penalty for Washington County. Each one has been for five yards. Gray looking for a hole, cuts it back inside, gets it back to the original line of scrimmage, maybe to the 12. So call it six, second down and nine. Well, I tell you this, Washington County, their offense, they're, they're built, they can play in long yardage. 
they've found a couple of times where the receivers sat down in zones, they've made plays, and A.J. Gray's been able to make plays to Jaquavius Latimer and a few of the other players. But big down here for both teams. Second and nine, Gray has it in his own hand, stiff arm, gets it to the 10. So it'll be third down and seven. That time they moved up into a 50, it was a five-man front. All right, go through it here. Yeah, I mean, they, they brought the two linebackers up and, and basically ran a 50 and brought them off the edge. Uh, man, I'm going to tell you, right now Calhoun's throwing everything but the kitchen sink at A.J. Gray to confuse him. Thomas Lester again at the ankles. 72 yards rushing now for A.J. Gray. 187 total yards of offense is his responsibility. Five in the pattern now for Washington County. Zone read, draw, thinks about it, and he got clipped and hit the turf. Lost a couple. And so now Joel Ingram has an interesting decision to make here. Austin Bennett, he's the rock in the middle. He can go sideline to sideline, and he comes up right now, and he lowers the boom on A.J. Gray. Boom. Dropped it, picked it up, hit the turf again. So it looks like Washington County is going to go for the game-tying field goal. He's tired. Oh, yeah. But that's what you expect in championship games. You know you're going to be tired. That's why he trained hard. That's why he had a great offseason. Russell Berry now in to try to even the game at 20. Coming up on three minutes to go in third quarter. Does he have enough of a draw? He does. From the right hash, 29-yard field goal for West Riberia, and we are now knotted at 20, 313 for the third. Well, say, it, you say a lot about A.J. Gray when you talk about his explosiveness at quarterback for the Washington offense. Let me tell you what I just saw then. I saw heart. I mean, I saw heart on that drive. I saw a lot of effort. You see how high the snap was? Great presence of mind for A.J. to bring it down quickly. He's doing it all. I mean, and that's what we expected. We expected to see a playmaker, one of the – all-time great playmakers in Georgia high school football history, and I see a lot of heart. He's running. He's giving it all. I mean, that's what you expect. And same way with Calhoun. I mean, you watch Cole Jackson. I'm watching all these guys compete. Landon Rice, just everybody. Kalen Riley, at quarterback for Calhoun. This is what high school football is all about. Teams that are they're well coached, and I see so much heart out there. You hate to see any of these teams lose, but there's going to be a team that gets their first loss and they're not, and they're going to be the runners-up, and there's going to be a champion crown that's undefeated in AAA. You saw the scoring drive at the bottom of the screen, 11 plays, 52 yards, took up 5 minutes, 20 seconds. Scoring drive once again brought to us by our friends at TCSG. Learn more, earn more. West Riberia with the kick. With the 7, fumble, picked up at the 9. Let's see what can be done with it. Doesn't even get to the 20-yard line. Tough return that time. This is so, going to be a personal foul penalty, I believe. I think it might be on Calhoun. What was that? Let's see what happened here. Bryson Bashong had it, picked it up. Let's see what happens here at the end of the play. Bashong hits the turf. I think Austin Bennett might have been a little bit of shenanigans. I'm not sure yet. I don't want to talk too soon. I might have caught the back end of it. All right, let's see what happened. Flag at the 19. Personal foul on yep. Calhoun. Looks like he caught it. So they'll move it back inside the 10 as they get their next drive underway. 3.05 to go for the third. The obvious displeasure there from Hal Lamb. There's Riley's numbers. Once again, 199 yards of total offense. 9 of 17, picking his spots for 137 yards through the air. Averaging a little over six yards a carry on the ground. Four in the pattern for Calhoun, three up high. We'd like to get everybody involved in this offense and take it 91 yards. They're going to have to do that. Washington County thinking blitz. I think blitz is always on their mind. <laughs> they, they show Spoken by a defensive man. When I watch them on film, I mean, they come from everywhere. Six in the box. Riley looking to draw. Gets it to the 11, and you can hear that hit up here. Big hit defensively on Kalen Riley by Will Conway, 23. Conway, one of the two-way players for Washington County. One of the three big seniors. Let's listen to this hit by Conway. 
and others. <laughs> Conway heading to Mercer right now. Riley looking, going for the bundle, and it's overthrown. Had what he wanted, get a blitz by Washington County. You get man-to-man -man coverage on the corner, just overthrew it a little bit. Looking for the best route runner of the squad, Chaz Moss. It's now third down and seven at your own 11-yard line. He'll look at that one on film next week and say, man, I wish I had. That was, he had an opportunity there because Chaz had to step on him on the defensive back. Biggest thing for Calhoun's receivers, find the marker. Biggest thing for Washington County's defenders, defend the marker. Riley looking. Rolling to his right, pressure, a lot of pressure. Gets rid of it in time so it's not a safety, incomplete. And a late flag at the spot of the foul, at the spot of the tackle. Let's see if they call it on Logan Hunt. Are they calling late hit? Or intentional grounding? Could be grounding. Intentional grounding. Good yep. call. On the offense. Good spot. Half the distance to go, fourth down, loss of down. Because the only reason he threw this out because he was in trouble, and that's intentional grounding. So here's the pressure, forces Riley to the outside. There he is as he's dropping. Mm. He hits the ground. There's another look from the ground level. All of that pressure coming from Washington County, he just gets rid of the football. So, and this is a careful situation too. The punter has to make sure he doesn't step backwards. Gets it away, nice high kick. And the 34, nothing happening on the return, maybe a yard, if that. Count all the Yellow Jacket defenders back there for special teams. I count six around the football. Excellent coverage by Calhoun. I mean, he only gained, what, two yards? That's excellent, particularly when you're backed up. You only have seven yards to punt. Anytime you're in that situation, you got to have fantastic coverage. Excellent work. Darius excellent Tucker. Work. Darius Tucker in for the reception on special teams. Under two minutes to go now, third quarter. And back comes A.J. Gray. How much does he have left in the tank? Joel Ingram said at the half if the game was eight quarters, it wouldn't matter. A.J. would have enough to be out there. He's a Gatorade player of the year. He's, he's got that for a reason. Top-notch player, but this is a good defense in Calhoun now. 14 minutes of regulation left. Fake handoff left. Gray running to his right stiff arm. But once again, good pursuit by Thomas Lester. Number two for Calhoun, two black. Knocks A.J. Gray off his feet again. But they'll spot it down at the 28-yard line for a gain of five. Well, great vision by A.J. Gray, because what he saw is Jaira Wilson ends up turning his butt towards the sideline. If your butt is facing the sideline, you can't change direction. You always want to keep your shoulders square. But nice cut by A.J. Two tight end set handoff up the middle for a couple of yards that time. Lorenzo Watts getting the carry. So it'll be third down and short coming up on 70 seconds for the third. I'm watching A.J. He's gutting it out. He's got his hands on his hips. Might need to get the oxygen out. We get him to get on the sideline. Do they even have oxygen for high school? I doubt that. Well, well, what is it you told me the one week when you're gasped? Breathe out of your nose faster? Deep in your nose, blow it out your mouth like a dragon. And off, left guard, first down, move the sticks, Washington County. Darius Tucker gets the first down, moves the sticks, 46 seconds to go for the third. Well, nice run by the sophomore. Takes it inside, nice job going downhill. Nice work. Landon Rice in on the tackle. If Washington County is going to win a championship, it's going to be more than A.J. Gray making plays. Going to need everybody stepping up. It's always been a different running back that has stepped up when they needed to during this playoff run. Momentum was stopped briefly for Darius Tucker. Ball on the ground. Calhoun's got it. I think Jaira made up for it. I know Jaira Wilson was the first one to get his hands on the running back. Malik Lawrence came out with it. Let's see what happened. Right, momentum, you thought you had it, and then he lost it off the right hip and falling on it. Malik Lawrence 
We thought momentum was stopped here. Legs kept churning, moved it out to the right. He just lost it off his right hip, and Lawrence fell on it. Big break for Calhoun. 22 seconds for the third. Thought about the screen, and a lot of pursuit up the middle. Kalen Riley still breaking tackles up to the 30. Ball hit the ground. Let's see what happens there. They're calling it down. Yes, they are. And Kalen Riley got a couple of good licks in succession there. Running tough, got his shoulders down, eyes up, keeps his legs churning, protects that ball. That's what you want. Running, shoulders down, eyes up, protect yourself. Excellent work. Shoulder down, three or four guys going after the football. Heads up, grinding again, and there he goes. He hits the ground. Broke three tackles. And then on the last tackle, that was when the helmet came off. Two tackles, three tackles, still churning out to the 30. Great effort by Kalen Riley there for the first down, or for the gain of seven, second down and three. And because Riley lost his helmet, he had to sit out, so they just aren't going to snap the football, and that'll do it for 36 minutes. In the battle of number one versus number two in AAA, it's Calhoun, it's Washington County, and nothing is resolved. We are tied at 20. The AAA champ is 12 minutes away. Regulation says that. Will we go further? We'll have the fourth quarter from the Dome when we come back. This program on GPB is made possible in part by supporters of the Georgia High School Association, including the following. You can't think about service in Georgia without thinking about our brave men and women in uniform. I'm here today with the Georgia National Guard, and we're very proud of them and their families and how they represent our state. At Georgia Farm Bureau, we're proud about the service we deliver to you and your family and to Georgia agriculture. We invite you to come to your local Farm Bureau office and join our family. Take advantage of Farm Bureau's many services, from multi-line insurance to money-saving discounts. Visit us online at gfb.org. This isn't Madison Square Garden. These drills probably won't make anyone a number one draft pick. But these players are practicing for something important. While they work on their jump shots, they're also learning teamwork, discipline, self-confidence, how to deal with wins and losses. Skills that will make them winners long after they leave the court. Support high school activities in your community. Because when kids take part, they get set for life. During this performance, one student will drop out of high school. Be there for your big finish. Nothing prepares you better for a great career than the technical college system of Georgia. TCSG colleges produce graduates with the knowledge and training today's top employers are looking for. With campuses across Georgia, state-of-the-art facilities, and outstanding instructors with real-world experience, it's the kind of affordable college education that will fast-track you into a rewarding career. We're building a better future for you. Contact the TCSG college in your area today or go to tcsg.edu. Welcome back to the Georgia Dome. The irony, last time I came in with trivia at the beginning of the second quarter, it was a tied game. It's a tied game again heading into the fourth quarter. Now 20-20 to 20 between Calhoun and Washington County. I asked you earlier in the game, who was the head coach that led Washington County to three 15-0 seasons in 94, 96, and 97? The answer is Rick Tomberlin. And our tweeter of the day for this game is Stephen Boatwright. He'd answered very quickly, and he got it all right. He got the years right and everything, and the coach right. So thank you so much for uh, joining us, everybody who participated. Congratulations. You get two tickets to the College Football Hall of Fame. Up to you, Nelly. Thank you very much, Grace. Rick Tomberlin and his wife, Angela, are here saw them in the tunnel before the game started. And he says he likes to sit in the end zone. As an old coach, he likes to sit in the end zone seats to get a good look of how things are. But we all know that Sandersville is well represented here. Big time winner now in time to, to watch the Golden Hawks as we get ready for the final 12 minutes. Second down and three. Handoff around the corner again. Big hole, 40, 45, 50. Spin move. Does he step out of bounds back about the 45? The answer, yes. 
big gain again for Cole Jackson. Outside zone play. I'm going to keep talking about it, talking about it. Number 44, Big Landon Rice has absolutely been doing a phenomenal job blocking at the point of attack anytime Cole Jackson sprung a leak in that defensive of uh, Calhoun. Gain of 26 for Cole Jackson. Washington County, I'm sorry. And another timeout called by Washington County. They only have one left for the final 11.50. And while they think about what's going on, we're going to take a break with them from the Dome. Ten seconds into the fourth quarter, who will be the demolition man for Calhoun or Waco? We'll find out when we come back to the Dome. Some questions. Can't wait until morning. So I'm one of many nurses at Cigna with answers anytime, day or night. I'm Lauren. And I've got your back. She's perfectly healthy. Cigna covers preventive care. That's having your back. Welcome back to the Georgia Dome. Triple A championship is in the balance. 11 minutes, 50 seconds to go. Regulation, Washington County and Calhoun. Battle of number one versus number two. This was not a surprise that these two squads would be going at it the way that they have for 36 minutes and 10 seconds. Time of possession, Washington mm. County's pretty much two to one. But in this day and age of football, doesn't matter what level, time of possession doesn't really matter all that much anymore. No, it really doesn't. And the way these teams can score, that doesn't really matter. But you know something interesting that mm. we talked to um, Calhoun about when we talked to Coach Lamb about going against the grain. This started against Westminster, breaking tendencies. Yep starting lining up Landon Rice used him as a blocker doing an excellent job on the run spring at Cole Jackson. You see him in motion to the left. Let's see if they go power left. They do to the corner. Great ankle grab there to keep Kalen Riley from going really anywhere. Will Conway with the tackle. Nice job by Will Conway. Georgia Southern has offered him. Shoots the inside. Does a good job shooting the gap. Gets inside of Truett Moss, number 71. Does a good job getting penetration. That's the way you stop that spread. You got to get some penetration to get in the backfield. Second down, 15. Quick dump on the screen. Gets it to about the 40. We got a flag. It'll be interesting to see what that is. So a gain of nine would make it third down six. Let's see what the end result is after they threw the laundry on the floor. Holding on the offense. 10 yard penalty from the spot. Second down. So it'll be a net loss of a yard, taking it back to midfield. So it'll be second down 16. Hal Lamb wants to figure out where it is. Well, usually you don't have enough time to even get a hold on a screen pass. Right in there. I right, mean, you can't. Right you don't even, there. there's, there's no reason to hold. But again, that's why these GHSA referees are the best in the business. I think it was Balin Spector on the edge. Takes yeah. it back to inside their own territory. Second down, 17. Riley looking. He overthrown it again. He intercepted A.J. Gray. He went and got that. A.J. Gray, Kaylin Riley was looking down the left side pretty much the entire route. A.J. Gray must have made up 25 yards. I mean, this is just... It's just a playmaker making a play right here. They take a shot downfield. A.J. Gray is playing a single high safety, and he has anything over that goes deep. That's his responsibility. Catches at its highest point. Nice work, A.J. Gray. Doing his damage is one of the best two-way players in the state. A.J. Gray with the pick, one of the three defensive backs in Washington okay. County's defensive set. They called it off. And they called it out of bounds. Out of bounds. Out of bounds incomplete because if he didn't have the catch in bounds, obviously it wipes out the INT. Okay, big break that time. Big break that time for Calhoun. All right, let's see what happens here. Calhoun gets a big break. Riley sends three in the pattern up high, who curls off. 
Thomas Lester complete. That is a major momentum swing when you go from a potential interception, change of possession, to Kalen Riley making an incredible play, getting out of pocket, making a first down there. I mean, that is huge for momentum when it comes to Calhoun. Gain of 15 off the catch. Calhoun's offense looking for the signals. Let's see if they change their mind again or go with what they have. Hand off. Big loss back outside the 40 yard line. Great pursuit defensively for Washington County by C.J. Davis and Will Conway. Excellent job by C.J. Davis and Will Conway being where you're supposed to be. That play was designed to go inside. The running back decided to bounce outside. And Coach Lamb is going to say something to him on the sideline about stay exact, go where you're supposed to go, son. Oliko Dennis with the loss of six back outside the 40. Riley looking again far sideline and almost a great one-handed grab by Balin Spector, but he couldn't hang on to it. Some hand fighting going on on that sideline on that deep throw. Good job setting his feet, getting his arm out and getting his elbow pointed where he wants it. Excellent job, excellent effort there. Good coverage, great coverage that time. All right, third and long yardage here. I'd be surprised if they keep him in the pocket because right now I expect Washington to send some, some pressure. He's got to get out of the pocket. Let's see if he goes draw play here. End of round. They're going to go off the trick, and he's wide open. Can it get there in time? Completion deep and down at the one or a touchdown. <laughs> 41 yards off the plate in the back of the playbook for Calhoun, and they take the lead 26-20. I thought I knew something was weird when I saw them run into the boundary because I said they got to get in space. Nice job on the double reverse, throwing it from the field. Excellent job. I mean, good creativity. Touchdown replay brought to us by the Technical College System of Georgia. One way, back the other way. And Balin Specter to Carson Brown into the end zone. They call it a score. And Carson Brown was wide open. wide open. Everyone pursued to the far side of the field. Carson Brown, the senior, was just sitting there waiting for it. Balin Specter had a lot of air under it, but it got there in time for the score. And let's take another look at it. Carson Brown, the 6'1", 170-pound senior at the end of this play. There's Balen Specter winding up and firing. And he's looking downfield like, I got to get it there. He's wide open. I can't miss. Nice job by Thomas Lester. Everybody all above. Carson Brown, nice work by the Calhoun offense. And that's what it takes. You work on that all year. You work on that at practice and you pull it out finally when you need it. And a lot of times, coaches don't, a lot of times when you haven't used some, a play like that in your game plan, Washington, they might not have saw that on film. Washington County, that might have been the first time they saw it. And that was a good call by Michael Davis pulling that trick out of the hat for a touchdown for Calhoun. Scoring drive brought to us by our friends at TCSG. Learn more, earn more. Eight plays, 78 yards, two minutes, 40 seconds. The reverse option pass, Balin Specter to Carson Brown. And Kevin Barnes, you get kudos. Yes, what can Brown do for you? The short version, Brown can score. The game leading score, 27-29, 42 to go. And a play that Washington County really wants back. Jonah Landry pinned him deep into the corner. But Darius Tucker kind of got caught in the in-betweens. And as a result, the ball is at the one. A tremendous kick. Caught, no real estate to do anything with it. If he could take and that back, he'd, he'd let that go. Darius Tucker knew it. Jonah Landry yeah. fired up. I had a coach years ago named Frank Gann Sr. for yep. the Atlanta Falcons. Yep. Great legendary special team coach. He'd always say in championship games, Attention to detail. It's the little things that separate the champions. Special teams has come up big yep. for both sides tonight. And Jake Gray winding up in the flat. 
Right down the seam, easy pitch and catch for the first down. Move the sticks, gets him out from under the shadow of the goalpost. Jaquavius Latimer for 12. Three catches last week, he was uncovered. I, I was looking from up here thinking it was an exotic defense by Calhoun, realizing that it looked like it was a, a misalignment by the defense. Gain of 14, takes it out to just shy of the 15. First down, 925 whistles, and they mm -hmm. had the same play again. There's no one covering him. There's no one covering him. He's, he's a third receiver from the sideline from the outside in. Start. Another first the down offense. penalty Five for Washington penalty. County. Mm -hmm. Still first down. Attention to detail. I'm hearing Frank Gans. When it gets crunch time, it's those little things that you do that make the difference between winning a championship. That third receiver, I'm telling you, I'm watching Jaquavius Latimer. Okay, they got now they've now they got a man. On. Got the safety over top of the second receiver inside. Let's see what happens this time. Thinking about the draw, and he's got a lot of real estate. Let's see if he gets picked up. 15, 20. A little sidestep out to the 23. Hello. So it's second down now and about two. Big scramble for A.J. Gray. Yeah, nice job by A.J. Gray. Nice job, but if A.J. seeing what I'm seeing, there are some holes right now in the Calhoun defense. They're getting a little undisciplined in this, in their, in this zone defense. There were four, I counted four receivers open on that last run. Ethan Woodard sticking a hand out to slow A.J. Gray down, second down two from the 23. A little swing pass out. Nothing happening there. Latimer is going east and west instead of north and south. No gain, third and two. You got to go. You got. You got to go downhill. You got to go and make the first down. Don't worry about going sideways. You got to go north south on that play. And again, he'll look back and realize on that play, I should have went north south. Get the first down. Don't try to jitterbug at that point. Coming up on eight minutes to go regulation. Washington County and Calhoun. I like this kind of battle. This is a defensive battle with offensive explosion in the way. They're giving a yard gain for Latimer, so A.J. Gray takes it into his own hands. Gets the first down outside the 30, up to about the 32, gain of eight, move the sticks. Good job on that quarterback keeper. You're going to see a lot of that this last seven minutes and 40, 51 seconds. A lot of A.J. Gray running, a lot of A.J. Gray in space. It's interesting to see who the spy guy is on him every time. I'm watching Jaira Watt Wilson. I'm watching Tristan Fuller. Looks like they've been, they're the spy guys right now when it comes to spying on the quarterback, A.J. Gray. Austin Bennett was the one that got him last, knocked him out of bounds. Looking, scrambling into the pocket, into traffic. Tries to get rid of it off his back foot. And incomplete at the 45. Flag at the 34. That'd be holding. Let's see. Because Gray went up into the pocket before he swept right to try to complete the pass to Lorenzo Watts. Let's see what the decision is by the men in the striped shirts. Ineligible downfield on the offense. Shoot themselves in the foot. And that man knows it. it. Seems like Calhoun's having more success now when they send that fourth blitzer, showing the, that three-man front, then bringing the, an extra linebacker to make a four-man pass rush. It's not giving A.J. Gray as much time, because when he gets three-man rush, they got five blockers on three. He has so much time that he's finding the holes every time after about three or four seconds, because it's hard to pass rush with three defensive lineman. First and 15, 741 to go regulation. Washington County starting from their own one. We've got more whistles. Before the snap, ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty. They're on their feet in here. Both sidelines are on their feet. I'm watching the fans. They are you could they are nervous in here now. It's a great game. Joel Ingram saying, what are you doing? Points to his temple and says, think. Is that, has, is it a 10 penalties yet for Washington? They're, they've got to be. Got to be right in the neighborhood. Nine, nine penalties. Hmm. First and 20. Let's see what A.J. Gray has in mind. Knocked down. Austin Bennett with the hands up. 
If there had been a little more elevation, it would have had a receiver wide open running down the seam at about the 35. Yeah, Jaclavius Latimer was wide open. Austin Bennett was your spy that time, staring right at him as he cocked and fired. So let's see what happens on second and 20. Into the pocket, sacked back at the 20 yard line. Mm -hmm. And there's your guy, Landon Rice, among others, Jira Wilson in there. Well, we just talked about the mole spy guy. We said it was going to be Jira Wilson. Studying that on film all week, that was a tendency who they had in time to play the great quarterback. And that's exactly what Coach Lamb said they would do. And it showed up. It's been Tristan Fuller here a lot, number 32. Jira Wilson comes on the pressure, does a good job. They went from that three-man rush to a four-man rush where they have a lot of success. They're gonna, I believe they play zone here, though. I really believe they're going to play back and play eight-man in coverage. 9 of 14 on nope. third down. Nope. Got to get to the 42. There's a flag and laying out incomplete. Another penalty. Big collision with Lorenzo Watts. Is that another hold? Looks like another hold. Dropped at the 17. Let's see what it is this time. Was that a false start? Illegal formation mm. on the offense. A penalty is declined. Fourth down. It says four times that's happened. Four times. Started with three. Again, here comes Jaira Wilson. Number three. All right, nice pressure. Here's the end of the play. Trying to get it to the marker. Two sets of hands trying to get after the football. Ethan Woodard on one end, Lorenzo Watts on the other. Punts away. It's a wobbler. Takes a bounce backwards, picked up at the 47-yard line of Washington County. And that's where Calhoun will take over. Six and a half to go regulation. Joel Ingram is going to try to figure out what to do down seven. Halfway through the fourth quarter, we'll have the AAA finale with regulation when we come back to the Dome. The GHSA Championship is made possible in part by Regions Bank, it's time to expect more. Georgia's Electric Membership Corporation, lighting the way. Technical College System of Georgia, learn more, earn more. Cigna, together all the way. And viewers like you, thank you. The GHSA would like to thank the Georgia Farm Bureau. Providing safe, affordable, and reliable electricity requires more than bucket trucks and utility poles. These are the faces behind your power. For more than 75 years, Georgia's nonprofit, member owned electric cooperatives have been on a mission to brighten the lives of more than four and a half million Georgians. We are Georgia's EMCs, proudly serving our members, lighting the way. As a strong, stable bank, Regions is always looking for opportunities to boost the vitality of our communities. In addition to offering financial solutions for our customers, we are committed to supporting local initiatives and organizations that help our neighborhoods thrive. Regions is proud to be a partner with GPB in building a better Georgia. Georgia Dome 6.33 to go regulation. Washington County had to punt away after starting their drive back at their own one after Calhoun scored to take the lead 27-20. And the Calhoun defense has really dialed it up here in the second half. Yeah, they really have, and they've, they've stepped up. They've stopped the inside dive that, you know, that's been a mainstay, of course, for Washington. And they're just doing a good job, and they're just getting a lot of, as we said, 
They're getting a lot of bodies around A.J. Gray, number five, the Georgia Gatorade Player of the Year. Right now committed to Georgia Tech. We're going to have him as a defensive player. He's out there as their deep safety right now on defense. As Calhoun takes it over. Kalen Riley up the middle. Maybe a yard. And right now, how much of this is clock management and how much of this is still doing your game? I think it's part management and doing your game. You want to keep the ball away from A.J. Gray, but I think you feel a little more confident that you've done a good job on him defensively. So I think you play to win here. I think you go down and try to score. Second down about eight and a half. And 46, Riley looking to his right, tucks it. Will go up the middle and he gets it close to the 40, down to about the 41, so gain of five, third and four. And those blue notches at the bottom of the screen. Washington County only has one timeout left. Hmm. No confusion in that third quarter. They ended up having to use their timeouts, you know. Had some challenges getting lined up. Offensively, Marlo East, the defensive coordinator for Washington County, is going to try to figure out how to stop that guy on a third and four, third and five, as we're coming up to five minutes. Really important here for Washington County. The Golden Hawks are going to send pressure. They have to play tight man to man coverage. And Hal Lamb calls a timeout at third and five to discuss things. And this is what I was getting at with clock management how much of it is staring at the clock, staring at your watch for an offense that's usually supposed to run spread and tempo. Right. Now you're dialing it back with a seven point lead. Don't do it, don't do it. You've been playing all year versus teams that you felt comfortable against. Now you finally, you're in a game that you weren't favored in, play to win. If you're Calhoun, I'm playing exactly if I'm playing against Westminster. Not a shot at Westminster. I'm playing exactly as I'm playing against any of the other caliber opponents that we blew out. You understand what I'm saying? So I, I wouldn't do that, but you also got to be smart because what they, they've had success running the ball and they've had success throwing the ball also. But I'm going to tell you, Kalen Riley right now, I mean, he's done a, a phenomenal job of making plays, though. So he, when they've had third down, like the last series when it was third and nine, they got the ball and did a good job and got the ball out of his hands and, and got a first down to Thomas Lester. So, you know, you just got to play to win, you know, I believe. And if you're on the other end of the spectrum, if you're Washington, Washington's defense, if they're going to send pressure, they have to make sure that they play the flat routes upfield and towards the sidelines and killing them in, when it comes to the passing game of Calhoun. Okay, more often than not, you look at Landon Rice, 44 for Calhoun. He'll be your slide back. He's almost like your H back. And whatever side motion he does, that's where the ball will go. To, to the left. Slide left. Let's see what happens. Slide left, stack left. Blew, blowing a tire was Cole Jackson trying to figure out a way to cut it inside quickly. Ethan Ray. Ethan Ray showed up that time exactly where he needed to be. Good job getting off a block by Ethan Ray. That was a huge play now because he had some he had some running room there. And he knew it too as soon as he hit the ground. So Calhoun is going to punt. They're in punt formation as we come up on 440 to go regulation. Jonah Landry. This, this is it. It's the last possession I believe that Washington County will get. Punt doesn't turn over, but it's a Calhoun player, but it's picked up at the 15-yard line. So that's where Washington County will start. 425 for regulation. Joel Ingram talking to the quiet professionals, the offensive line. They picked that up yep. from the Navy SEALs. That's the approach that they've always had. And clearing all the holes for the state player of the year. Coming up after this game, north side Warner Robbins. Playing Mays. Mays chasing after a title for the city of Atlanta for the first time since 1973. North side. And you know that half of Warner Robins will be here. The north, northern part of Georgia 247 will be here in full force. That one's coming up. Kick off in about an hour. 
A.J. Gray looking for a hole. Tucks it inside. A lot of black shirts there to keep him from getting anywhere. Maybe lost a yard. I made a statement right before the, the first down play. I mean, right before the punt. This is the last drive. This is it. I believe that this is the last drive that Washington's defense offense is going to have with A.J. Gray. When you look at the time, they only have one timeout. And we're 358 and ticking here. Second down 11 from their 14. Gray to the air. Knees don't hit the ground. But Logan Hunt carries the ball and a couple of Calhoun players past the marker. First down, Washington County move the sticks. Ooh, nice job on that curl route, throwing it on rhythm. Excellent job. Gets the ball out of his hands. Nice job. And 12 on the side route. Off the 26. You see the time remaining. Gray scrambling. He's got space, but decides to throw it. Knocked through the hands of a defender. Malik Lawrence in and out of his hands. A.J. Gray was locked in on a receiver the entire time, and it almost cost him. As the defensive backs coach for Calhoun's heart is beating, because if he doesn't make that catch and it goes through his hands, that's a touchdown. They need a quick touchdown here. They take a mark. Evis Latimer that time. Second and ten. Three and a half to go. Pump. Side route again. And again. Logan Hunt. And again. The first down. So they've seen something, obviously. Another flag. But a flag at the 25 could bring it all back. Legal man downfield. One of the offensive linemen downfield. Wow. He has so much time. <laughs> they're blocking. I'm serious. The, the defensive linemen right now for Calhoun, they're not getting any pressure, the three-man rush. But when they bring Jairo Wilson, you know, he, he makes a little noise when it comes to getting pressure. Right. Ineligible downfield mm. on the That's offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. And in talking with Hal Land this week, you said that Jairo Wilson is one of the best he's ever coached. That's right. Complete package. Tremendous pass rusher. Oh, he's coming. He's He's coming. They're laying off Logan Hunt up at the top of the screen. Ten-yard cushion. They're giving him the marker. A.J. Gray thinks about it, tucks it. 25-30, grabbed from behind. Escapes that tackle out to the 41. First down, move it. Gain of 20, move the sticks. Nice play. That's just effort. There was a defender that had him by the collar. I think Austin Bennett was going to have a horse collar. He yep. let it go because it was going to be a, horse, be a penalty. Smart there. Out to the 40, under three minutes to go. Three receivers up high, soft coverage, looking down the middle, and is it caught? Jaquavius Latimer says yes. Officials say no. I want to see Jaquavius sit those feet down and slow it to break my feet down a little bit. Got to have that. Yep, hit the ground. Hits the ground. Yep. Just a, actually got to get the ball up a little bit. A.J. Gray just trying to make it happen. Wanting to bring that championship down to Sandersville. And this is the test for the player of the year. Can get a drive done to tie the score. Under three minutes to go regulation. A lot of time for him to throw. Off his back foot, tries to just get rid of it, and he does. Third and ten. Four-man rush again. What a great coverage day for Calhoun. Give him a lot of credit, man. Chase Arnold, defensive back coach, you can see he's put a lot of work in. They're trying to, basically what they're saying is, we're going to make you beat us with your arm, A.J. Gray. 141 yards passing on the day. And look at all the paint that's been traded by all those guys in the trenches. Three up top again, big cushion. Gray looking, he's going to tuck and run. 40, 45, 46 and a half. So he's about four yards short of the first down. It's going to be fourth and four. He is tired, man. He is exhausted. And he's got to get up. He's got to get up. Keep competing, man. I like the way he's competing, AJ. Get off the ground. Washington County uses yep. their last timeout at 2-11. 
Man, Jairo Wilson again. Man, they're and like a pack of wild bees out there. They are, I'm telling you, Calhoun, excellent job. I mean, give the entire Calhoun defensive staff a lot of credit for putting together a scheme where they're starting to rough up A.J. Gray. I mean, you're starting to see number five get tatted around a little bit. He's seeing coverage. He's seeing blitzes. I mean, he doesn't know who the mole blitzer is. And right now, we finally figured out it's Jaira Wilson, number three, who's having a tremendous game right now for the Calhoun defense. Now, Calhoun is no stranger to playing in a game 15. And we have the evidence to show you that they're used to being in these kinds of situations. Last half a dozen years. Last year was the uncharacteristic one. Well, they lost to Benedictine in the quarters. Lost to Jefferson in the finals. Then there's the 2011 win in overtime against Buford. And then you see Buford, 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 Buford. Mm -hmm. the rough games against Buford, won the one in 2011, their first since 1952. And they're 211 from getting another one. Justin Harris, Tyra Wilson, and a lot of traded paint. I'd be surprised if if he doesn't look for Jaquarius Latimer or if he doesn't run it. Logan Hunt had the marker. And he's sitting there squatting the route. Is short. I knew he tried to run it. Anytime a quarterback's backed up, they go back to what they do best. And what you just saw then, A.J. Gray did exactly the tendency, of course, what running quarterbacks do. He's trying to make a play, and he makes it best with his legs. Probably didn't trust his throwing ability at that point. Good pressure. There he is to the left. Bryson Bashan grabs him by the jersey. The 5'10", 165-pound junior tracking him as the spy and grabs him down. What a play. 120 seconds. Calhoun has to get rid of with two timeouts. Washington County cannot stop the clock. There's A.J. Gray. Six feet short of changing the sticks for the game tying score. Unless there's a fumble, the game is over. And the 2011 game also had its yep. intrigue as well. Now you want to just take a knee. Run the clock out. We talked about Washington County using their timeouts. We right. made a good point early on. It started in the third quarter. Within the first five minutes of the third quarter, they had already erased two of their timeouts. Come here. They needed to kind of get it together, gather, and talk about that fourth down play. Wipe that out. No first down. And now... Calhoun, it's their game to lose. So all they got to do is take a knee, you know. Come out here as a victim. Two minutes to go. And you know that Hal Lamb is going to be working the math. First and foremost, Washington County is going to have to come up with a stop to have any time on the clock to do anything. Right. And, and what you're, if you're the defensive coordinator now, for Washington County, what you're telling him is to rip and strip. Somebody, we got to rip it out. You want to arm bar him. There's Marlo East yep. right there, the defensive coordinator. Yep, Marlo East, he wants to t he's telling his guys, they work on it every day. You go out there, you work, you grab, rip, and strip, pull the ball out. One guy pull his arm back, the other guy go for the ball. And you got to be very, you got to be over aggressive here. If you get a penalty, that's the break. You got to try to get the ball out. Game of four. Second and six, 80 seconds to a title for Calhoun. Handoff, Cole Jackson, 45 down to the 42. Third down and three. Coming up on 70 seconds. Calhoun can feel it, but they've got to get another first down. Cole Jackson's covering that ball up like a mama with a newborn. <laughs> You ain't gonna get to this one now. You squeeze him just like a newborn baby. 93 yards on the ground for Cole Jackson. 11 carries. So let's see what Calhoun can do here. 40 seconds to go. They need three yards. Cole Jackson first down. Power eye right. 
to get the first down. Billy Henderson, my old high school coach at Clark Central, will be proud. Power eye right, power eye left. Calhoun looks like they're going to get it done. All they have to do is snap it one more time. Clock's running. They're not even going to snap it. Hal Lamb's got the stop sign up. No need to. There's nothing, no need. Six Calhoun. appearance in seven years for Hal Lamb. Calhoun gets their second title in four. Helmets are going everywhere. Look at those kids. I love it. <laughs> That's what it's all about, man. When you become a champion, there is nothing like it. I know what they're feeling. Congratulations, Calhoun. Kalen Riley jettisoned that football. Somebody in the Calhoun Athletics Department is going to want that football. That goes in a trophy case for the next forever. It's the hundred, that's the hundred year trophy. I mean, it's the hundred year ball. Helmets are going everywhere. Brothers are jumping over the side. Security turning their head a little bit. Come on, they're coming. It says a lot about that junior quarterback right there, Kalen Riley. He's coming back for one more year. And at the same time, Washington County had a tremendous year on their own. And then this battle of number one and number two, depending on which poll you paid attention to, these two teams were at the top of it the entire year. This was the matchup that we had anticipated. And it came down to Calhoun's defense in the second half, locking down A.J. Gray. And we knew there were going to be a lot of spies. It ended up being three or four spies really on A.J. Gray right. clamping down on right. him in the second half. Jairo Wilson did a heck of a job disguising the blitzes, making secure tackles, but he also put a little bit of pressure on A.J. Gray, which was a huge key. And then from the Calhoun point of view, offensively, Calhoun did a tremendous job when it came to having a junior quarterback out there showing a lot of poise for a junior in Kalen Riley. Right and making sure that they had what they needed. Cole Jackson had a tremendous day leading them unaccounted for in the first half on a lot of big plays, and he broke those big plays out right. a lot. And, you know, how hard is it? You know, we talked about it in the open, but now that it's over, how hard is it to go pillar to post number one? It's really hard because everybody, this team had a bullseye on it. Calhoun, every week they had a bullseye on it because they were the best, and it's really tough. And when you get to, I mean, you finally reach the pinnacle of winning the championship. You just appreciate all the hard days at practice, all the times mom, you know, picked me up at school or dropped me off or, you know, whatever that matters. Going to the weight room early in the morning, it's just really hard. And, you know, you got to give both teams a lot of credit, Calhoun and Washington County. But at the end of the day, give Calhoun a lot of credit. This is the most dynamic scoring offense in the history of high school football in the state of Georgia, averaging 53 points in Washington County. To hold them to what, 20 points is absolutely phenomenal. Quickly downstairs, Grace Olson with someone who gave a really big hug, Kim Lamb. I'm here with probably maybe one of the most excited people outside of the team. This is Kim. This is Coach Lamb's wife. She's shaking right now. She just gave him a massive hug. Just tell me what you're feeling right now. I'm just so thankful. God is so good. I had a dream this week about Joshua and the Battle of Jericho, and it came true. This was our Joshua moment. I'm so thankful. You've only won once out of the last seven appearances, and now you finally got that next one. What is it like to kind of push it over the edge and get that second state title win? Oh, gosh. The community of Calhoun, they wanted this so badly, and they have been behind our boys, and it is just so awesome to be able to share it with them. Well, many congratulations. You go enjoy it. You. I love your buttons. Thank let's, you. let's send it back over to Mark. Thank you. Mark Harmon is ready to deliver the trophy to the AAA champs from Calhoun. Time now to present the Class 3A state championship trophy in a whale of a game between two undefeated and really talented teams. The executive director of the GHSA, 
Mr. Gary Phillips. Thank you, Mark. Coach Lamb, congratulations on a great season. And our partners from Georgia Farm Bureau are here to present the award to your team. On behalf of Georgia Farm Bureau, I would like to congratulate the Calhoun Yellow Jackets. We are Calhoun! Yes! Coach Lamb, congratulations. What does this win mean for you and your program? Well, I'm going to tell you one thing. We couldn't do it without, without our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's number one. and this, this, He helped our football team this year. I promise you that. But I'm going to tell you what, there, there wasn't many people in this dome that gave us a chance. But I guarantee you that crowd over there gave us a chance. It was a battle of unbeaten two 14-0 teams against the sky, a team that had an excellent offense, best ever in the state of Georgia, and your team came out on top. Well, I tell you, we got a special group of seniors. Uh, we got 22 of them that have uh, had provided tremendous leadership for this football team, and I couldn't be more happier for those guys. They're a special bunch. But, of course, we couldn't do it without our community. Thank you so much, community. Hey, Thomas Lester, talk a little bit about what this win means for you. Uh, I'm just very thankful for my teammates and the great the fans we got. We got the best fans in the world. And for our, our students, our students mean everything to us. And I just, I want to thank God for everything he's blessed us with. He's truly blessed this team. I love it. I love it. I don't want to trade it for the world. Cole Jackson, you found the end zone tonight. Talk about today's game. It was amazing. I couldn't do it without my, my D-line. Y'all boys mean everything to me. I love you all my heart, baby. I just want to praise God. We couldn't do it without him this whole season. It's hey, Austin Bennett, look at your fans over there. They're fired up. The Yellow Jacket faithful. What do you say to them? Man, I just thank all y'all for coming out and supporting us. It means a whole lot, and y'all are a great community. I'm just so happy for this win. Listen, congratulations to all the Calhoun Yellow Jackets, 1952, 2011, and now 2014. Congratulations. And now over to Raven Toronto for our GPB tailgate party.